Good evening, everyone. I'm going to, we're back from our closed session. So we'll go ahead and go in. Uh, so I'm going to close out. Um, I'm going to close out our, our special board meeting for administrative salaries review to briefly open our special board meeting for Pajaro Middle School Resolution for Emergency Contract Services. I'd like to make a motion to postpone the starting of our Pajaro Middle School Resolution until after the special salaries meet board meeting. I have a first. Do I have a second? I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 502. So I'm closing our special board meeting for our for our, our Pajaro Middle School resolution, and I'm going to open our special board meeting for our administrative salaries review. So just, you know, we, we're in cl closed session before, so I just want to say welcome to everyone uh, for this, this meeting. If you didn't hear me when I, we were before, um, closed session, we do have translation services available in Spanish. So please see Orania Lopez if you need that. Um, so tenemos traducción en español. Si necesita de este servicio, por favor pase con uh, Orania Lopez. And if you would like to speak to an item on the agenda, please fill out a speaker card um, prior to the agenda item. Each speaker will have two minutes. And so we will go to item 3.2, um, the Pledge of Allegiance, and I will ask uh, Trustee Flores to lead us in the pledge. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, public for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to item 4.1, our approval of agenda. I'd like to make a motion um, to approve the agenda with adding um, before 5.1 um, a report out of closed session. Okay, I have a first. Do I have a second? Second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 502. <laughs> All right, so we will go on to item 5.1, our administrative salaries review, and there, oh, pardon me. A lot of moving parts this evening. So let's go ahead and do our report out of closed session. Thank you. Um, so under item 2.1, um, under closed session, under closed session agenda item 2.1, I move to approve the recommendation by the district of a full expulsion for one calendar year for student number 22-23-008. I have a motion, do I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, so four, zero, one, two. All right. So now we will go on to um, administrative salaries review and the report will be presented by Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah. Thank you so much. So as I was working with staff to develop this presentation, I actually realized um, what a wonderful opportunity it is to be able to put all this information within a really condensed um, portion of the day. And um, often, I think a challenging, often we have a system in which we have people who will come up even tonight up to the podium and they, the process is, is they were able to make their public comment. But because of Brown Act and just the procedural nature, we don't respond to those, res we don't respond to it. Also, and often, Unfortunately, uh, sometimes some of that information that the people have is either misinformation or even untruths. And so we generally, as administration, because we know that when adults don't get along, the people that actually are the most harmed are our children. So most of the time, we take it on the chin and we just move past. And we don't always respond back with accurate information. This also has been a conversation actually that's been going on for ever since I've been here for about seven years. So it's not a new conversation. So I think this will really, so my hope is that a lot of times we have people that come up and make a response 
And then when we come to do the presentation, they've already left the room. So my hope is that people that are watching and people that are here are able to see the information in, in its entirety. And everything is footnoted, so you can fact check me if you like, um, because I think it's important for people to really understand um, what administrators do. Um, I was raised by an administrator. I was raised by a superintendent. I saw what he did, and I aspired to be like him, and I know he would be proud of the work that I've done. So here we go. Let's look at it. So we often hear, why do we not align our budget with what's important? I would say with this um, right here that you'll see that we actually are. So when you look at it, we have $267 million, which is our budget. And you look at where do we spend that money? 58% of it is on certificated staff and, and benefits. 33%, which is actually higher than most school districts, is 33% is classified staff. 5% is site certificated administration. And then 2% for classified management and 2% for district certificated management. And that really, that's 84% um, of what we have, we spend on people and people that work with our students. And then you'll see the other figures. Oftentimes, um, we have heard and we hear, we're top heavy. We have a lot of management. Especially if you are in management, you'll know that that doesn't feel like we're very top heavy. But even though we've been, we've been accused of that, we have tried to make strides to say, okay, well, what can we cut? And I want you to notice that in 1718, we had 174 managers. When I, so a year, my second year here, we had 174 managers. By 2020, we were down to 157, right? And then we have continued to go down to where we're at 152. If you ask, was COVID easier on administration? Was the floods easier on administration? The answer is no. What we did instead is we just spread that work out. I tried to be a good role model in that when everybody else is tapped out, I try to take on the work, just as each and every administrator in this room does for their own staff. And so recently, so one of the key complaints was you have too many cabinet members. So we took out a cabinet position, reorged it, and so we lost one of our assistant superintendent positions. We lost a coordinator of adult ed, and now we're reorganizing a virtual academy as well, and so that will be a principal reduction. We also had extended learning. You ask extended learning, or you ask m and and they have lost management too as well due to restructuring because they knew that we needed to put our priorities where they should be, which is within the classroom. So that's exactly why we did that. Often people will say, well, but you're still top heavy. Look at how much percentage you have compared to other districts. So just as a reference, because I know it's hard for people to see, this is every single school district within the two counties that we are in. So Monterey and Santa Cruz County. What you'll see on the right is the, the dollar amount per student that we spend in management, uh, every single manager, um, compared to other school districts. And you can see where we are with the arrow. So you'll see that we, by far, are not top heavy compared to other school districts. And for the most part, we are either the ones that are lower than us is within dollars. Um, except for two locations. And so, again, we've had these conversations fairly frequently, um, and so we continue to look at that. Something that is important to all of us and something that has been a priority of all of this school district is benefits. So every single employee in this school district is been, receives these benefits. So if you are a classified staff member, um, then over 
um, the f over four hours or 3.75, then you receive it at no cost to you at all. Um, certificated including management certificated we pay if we want if we want family we pay ninety dollars um, but that's very low and you'll see when you'll remember what I said we have 267 million dollars 55 million of that goes towards benefits just off the top and because we pay 100 percent um, it's going to go up nine to ten percent next year so PVUSD covers 100% of that increase, right? So if you are in Santa, in Santa Cruz City Schools, it's a 70-30 split. So that 10% is going to eat at their bottom line, their pocket, their employee's pocket. It will not eat at ours, but it does eat at the district's bottom line, right? So I'm not here tonight to debate whether or not we should have high quality benefits, but it is something that when people say, why don't we pay more? That is part of it. And when you look at local districts, what you'll find is this is um, for all the employees, the cost of employees that take the family benefit. One thing, because we pay 100% of family benefit, except for that $90 a month, what you'll see is our comparison of how much it costs us per employee is tremendously high compared to all the other local districts. Then when you look at, you might say, but not everybody does family benefits. So this is plus one. So this is even if you look at just the, f the if you like exclude all the people that do family benefits um, and you say, let's look at plus one, even for our employees who are just plus one, you can see we're still second to the highest right because of the proportion that we pay of health benefits so that that is some that's a, a discussion that we eventually need to have so this the when we had the item and it was tabled there's a lot of discussions about management either receiving or not receiving um, what they deserve and so you'll look and you'll see that in general management has always taken the less of it so in 2016-17, management um, received the exact same as PVFT. CSEA at that time received 3,200 off the salary schedule. Um, and um, management received 1% ongoing and 2% off the salary. 17-18, um, we received the 2%, which was equal to most of PVFT and 3% ongoing for CSEA. I also just want to note, in 1718, we converted all the nurses to the school psychologist sp and speech and language pathologist salary schedule, which at that time gave them an instant $20,000 increase um, per nurse. And we did that because we saw that we couldn't recruit nurses, right? We couldn't actually capture nurses from the hospitals that pay so much more. Um, we also at that time added the bilingual stipend to the contract. In 1819, you'll see again, we took the lesser of the two. So we went 3%. Um, PVFT got 4% ongoing. Um, and then CSEA got 3% ongoing plus one additional holiday. Fast forward to 1920. We received no increase that year. We didn't take anything. Everybody else received the 473. Um, PVFT also received 1% of ongoing for adult education because we understand they're one of the lowest, um, one of the, the lowest paid. So 2021 came. Um, we received 2100 off the salary schedule. So when we say, just like everyone else, that we haven't received an on the salary schedule raise since 2018-19, that is accurate. Um, and so this is just a one-time payment. Um, PVFT, however, did receive $1,135 off the salary schedule, but also received 1% because we reduced two work days. So each work day, is valued at about 0.5. So we took away two work days, so they no longer have to work two of those days, um, but they didn't decrease their pay, which means that they, be, in essence, got a 1% increase on the salary schedule. 
Um, there also was um, revised salary schedules for ECE, um, and then 1% for adult ed on and off. And then we went, as is customary, we took the, the less of the two. Um, and so then we um, received only what CSEA received, which was 2100. Because if you would have given us 1% plus the 1135, that would have been more than 2100, of course. Um, also at that time, we provided a stipend for special education teachers, two additional Wednesdays for grading, three additional Wednesdays for SPED, and established a caseload. CSEA also received two additional vacation days, which again is equivalent to additional money. So 2021, which is what we were talking about two weeks ago. Um, so to date, P uh, management has not received anything. Um, PVFT, we settled quite a while back. They received 4,000 for each salary schedule, K-12, um, 2,000 for each salary schedule for the nurse psychologists and speech and language pathologists, plus an additional 1,000 off the salary schedule. And then you'll see ECE got 6% ongoing, plus the 600 off the salary schedule, and 5% for adult education. So we have, again, demonstrated that each year we have been recognizing that both adult ed and ECE are some of our um, lowest paid. CSEA received the 4.5 ongoing and then 1,800 off the salary schedule. What management was requesting was the 4.5% ongoing um, with the CSEA. Now I can say we could actually change that. It's no longer offered. It was the deal was sealed yesterday. Um, and so we did offer a 10% ongoing for all PVFT, which is reflective of what we also provided CSEA, which was 10% ongoing and 1,500 um, off the salary schedule. So I just want to kind of, so now I'm going to do some comparisons. Um, because we often hear that management have these large salaries and that they make all of this money. So I want to actually put it into daily rate for you. So our average nurse, speech pathologist, and psychologist has eight years with PVOSD. Our average elementary principal has four years um, as a principal. And most of the time they've been within PVOSD much longer than that, but they have four years with us. So you have a te you have a nurse um, that makes about four hundred and forty seven dollars a day, and then you look at management and it is um, four hundred and sixty one dollars a day. So that's pretty commensurate. Both are pretty equal. Now let's look at a teacher. The average teacher make is twelve years with us for elementary. So. A lot of people want to say we have complete turnover. That's incorrect. Our average teacher has been with us 12 years as an elementary teacher and 10 years as a secondary teacher. So let's look at those daily rates, 373 and 397. And then you're like, okay, well, principal, see, they still make more. The difference is, is management cannot make extra hours. Management cannot make extra days. So let's look at that. So let's look at if a brand new teacher, a 10-year teacher, or a veteran 20-year teacher wanted to work not even the days that management works. So these numbers right here are five less days than an elementary principal. These, the, this pay includes 17 days less than cabinet. And let's just go with a 10-year teacher, because that's our average. So if I wanted to work still less days than an elementary principal and probably less hours, I could make $136,000 a year. Now, they don't have to do that. Management does, right? Management also doesn't get to say, OK, it's 5.45, I'm off, see ya, right? We stay until the work is done. 
no extra pay, no ability to pay. So let's just talk about local districts. And I'm going to talk about elementary principal, middle school principal, high school principal. And since I seem to be a big topic of interest, superintendent. So we will look at local districts. So again, our elementary principals work 210 days. Looking at all of Monterey and Santa Cruz County, we are the least paid by far, bottom. So this hasn't been a conversation we've just done for a couple of years. We've been battling this for a while. So in 2020, we, we, were heard, we heard, stop doing local districts. They're not like us. They don't have all the funding that we have. So we were provided in 2020 with all the names of the comparable districts of similar size school districts um, by PVFT. So these are these exact districts. And lo and behold, where are we? Last place. Middle school principals uh, for um, the count two counties, second place, you can tell not by much, but second place. Similar schools, and they now work 215 days. We're in last place yet again. High school principal, 222 days. So each one, they do make a little bit more, but that is also because of how many d more days that they work. And again, second place for the county and last place for high school. So let's go on to superintendent salary. There we are in the red. You might be like, see, she doesn't make too bad, right? Let's look at the numbers on the side. So a superintendent makes, mo makes their money according normally, according to the number of students in their district. So let's look at the ones that are on the very far left. They have 115 students. 58 students, 35 students, 122 students, 122, 145. You might be like, wow, what kind of superintendent are they? They are what we call a principal superintendent. They're what we call smalls. So they are a one, one school district. They actually do have a lot of responsibility because they still have to do a lot of the reporting. And it actually can be very, very challenging to be in a small school district that small. And then you'll see the four that are closest to me in salary, 1,700, 4,800, 7,800, right? Now let's look at the ones that are all on the right. None of them is are, are large as this, right? The fourth highest paid, um, which is Salinas Union, is not quite as big as us, but you can see he is making significantly more than, than I am. So let's look at um, similar size districts. Dead last again, right? And you look at the numbers. We have a range from what we used to be, which was 20,000, to about what we are right now. Very similar. So you might be thinking, OK, well, what about that cabinet, right? So this is from Transparent California, and you'll see we are dead last again. And you might say these are all the school, the comparable schools, and you might say, look at those last four. They make what the superintendent makes, right? So when we're thinking about what needs to happen, um, we need to continue to remember this information. So let's look at let's look at promotional opportunities in PBUSD and why they're either there or not there, right? So let's go back to the average teacher. Normally, they, they've been with us for quite a long time. They make three hundred and ninety-seven dollars a day. They have to come in at step one principal or assistant principal or AC. We don't put them generally on level five or six because they have no experience. Let's just say that we were generous and put them because they had some type of experience on level two. They're going to make less money per day or barely more money per day. 
So what we have is a lot of people accepting jobs and then they're like, yeah, no. Because guess what? I can't make all that extra money. I can't make that $70 of before and after school. I can't make more money in summer school because those are actually contract days. So then you have a, an assistant principal, an academic coordinator that wants to become a principal. Usually they've been with us a while. So let's look at the blue boxes, right? So they are at, they're making $456 a day or 470 And let's say that they want to become an elementary principal or an elementary middle school. Again, they're either taking a pay cut or very little increase. So a lot more responsibility and very little increase. The same happens when you are thinking about going to the district office. So you might think, okay, well that's the principals, but that district office, they're gonna make a lot more. No, they aren't. And we have two, and I won't name them, they can decide later on if they wanna name themselves. We have two principals that became coordinators in this district this year that took a pay cut to come to the district office. So we don't make a whole bunch of money in the district office with more days. And then if you want to promote up and you want to be, go from being either a high school principal and becoming like the executive director of teaching and learning, you're taking a pay cut yet again. So then you think, okay, well, let's look at going from a director to cabinet. And again, you do see this time, you see a small increase, but again, very little compared to the headache, especially that I put them through. So let's talk about administrative vacancies. So we had 12 of them at the start of the year. So we had 7.6% of our staff was not, our administrative staff was not present. We currently have six, which is 3.8%. Just to give you a little bit of comparison, we have 24 teacher vacancies, which is 2.5%. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't have less teacher vacancies, because we should. But I wanted to put that into comparison for you so that you kind of understood the gravity of what's happening. So we have vacancies are currently being covered by retirees and by district office admin. And so we had five administrators. So we didn't always have the $70 of extra pay per hour. We didn't always have that. We have that now. So we had five administrators this year probably the first time, but this year that went back into the classroom um, because they could make more. And so you'll see all these that are filled. And most people will say, I didn't even know about all these vacancies, really. And that's credit to each and every person that's out here right now because they took on that time. So when you say, why didn't we hear about that this was vacant? Why did we not skip a beat? It's because we had people taking on that work within the district office. And so what we have asked for, it's already included in the budget and it has been included for this entire year. So we already knew what we had given PVFT last year. So we already knew it was in the budget. Um, and so we were asked, how much is that? And it is um, 157 of us. It's now, because remember, it's retro back to 2021. That's why it's 157 and not 152. Um, and it costs 862,507. And so before we go to public comment, I just want to note that every single administrator that is out there at one time was doing an entry level job, was a teacher, was a bus driver, was an IA, um, worked as a classified employee. And what we're saying now is that we too matter and we too deserve the respect because this district would not run without management. Thank you.
Do we have any public speakers to this item? <laughs> well, yes, we do. Um, and I will call you up by orders of three, so please come up to the um, podium and orders of those three um, at a time. And also, if I do mispronounce your name, please um, do feel free to correct me. Betty Bobita, Laura Smith, and Amy Thomas. And each... <laughs> and for our timekeeper, each speaker gets two minutes. Is this on? Um, good evening, President Holm, trustees, Superintendent Rodriguez, and cabinet members. My name is Betty Bobita, former mayor of the city of Watsonville. I have worked numerous hours on various group contracts, police, fire, mid-management, public works, always working towards a fair agreement. I have served the PVUSD work with Paro Valley Federation of Teachers classified workers, and management trying to work with each group fairly. All three groups are essential to education. Teachers have settled, and CSEA has settled. Now it is time for management. Why would you not consider giving management a raise? There are sufficient funds in the budget. All three groups are an integral part of any school district. You need to settle with your managers. Wages are already low, and managers have a lot of responsibility for our students, our schools, and the district office. Yes, you need teachers and classified employees, but you need leaders, too. Support leaders and give management a 4.5% raise, the same as the other bargaining units. You cannot forget one large part of the team. Fair raises for all before you call, cause leaders to leave PVUSD for greener pastures. You, the trustees, have the ability to keep the district going forward or causing the district to break apart. Do the right thing and give management the Me Too raise of 4.5%. Thank you for letting me speak. Good evening, President, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. My name is Laura Smith, and I'm a very proud second grade teacher at Minty White Elementary. I, um, last year, I would have introduced myself as the proud principal at Radcliffe Elementary. I left my administration, administrative position because I realized my true place was in the classroom. I also left because of the stress of the job and honestly the difference in salary between my teaching position and my admin position was not enough to keep me. The difference in my per diem rate of last year compared to this year as a teacher is $11 per day less. I am here tonight to support the Wolf Pack of Site Administration and all of PVUSD school site staff. Site administra administrators keep everything going on our school campus. I remember our AC and I, Heather Bailey, texting every morning starting at 5.30, trying to figure out how we would manage all of the vacancies we had for the day and keep the school running most importantly, keep the students safe. The responsibility is immense. Being an educator, students need to come first and the vacancy crisis is real. All PVUSD employees need to earn a living wage so that we can work here. We are here because of our immense dedication to our students. Thank you for your time and consideration. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. My name is Amy Thomas, and I am the principal of the Watsonville Charter School of the Arts for the past eight years. WCSA is a school that I cherish and hold tight in my heart, one that supports each other, and one that has very little teacher turnover rate, and one that celebrates and appreciates e each other's talents and hard work. I wish that I could say that I felt the same support and appreciation from those outside my school and leadership team. First and foremost, we are educators. 
Being a teacher since 2001, I value and understand the incredible importance and undervalue of te teachers nationwide. Please understand that it is the same for site principals, assistant principals, directors, coordinators, etc. We are stepping in as long-term subs, short-term subs, athletic directors, yard duties, mental health counselors, healthcare assistants, and many, many more, all while keeping up with the daily rigors of being a site principal. Unfortunately, this leads to long hours and working through the weekend. We do not do this work to be appreciated. However, it would feel nice to be appreciated from those that see the big, the big picture, such as a school board. I ask you, why should we continue in this thankless and voiceless job day in and day out when we are not properly compensated? I can guarantee everyone sitting before you today can say the same thing. We do it for our students, for our teachers, for our communities. Our, stu our students deserve the highest quality of education and our teachers deserve the best working environment. They deserve a leader that's going to stick through the tough situations day in and day out. The teachers deserve to be with a leader that trusts their choices, is their biggest cheerleader, and one that supports and celebrates them. I urge the school board today to invest in the administration as well as the teachers. We go hand in hand and need to stand in solidarity together. Without quality leaders, we would not have quality teachers. And our, stu our students deserve better. If you deny this request today, we will know your true feelings and intentions. Our next three speakers are Brooke Hopkins, Elaine Parker, and Jackie Medina. Good evening, President Holm. Uh, Board of Trustees and Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Brooke Hopkins and I'm here tonight to advocate on behalf of all managers uh, for approval of the proposed 4.5 percent salary increase for 21-22 and then our future salaries increase alongside those bargaining units. I've been an employee of PVUSD for 24 years. I've served Take a breath. Um, nine years as a teacher, 14 years as a site administrator as both assistant principal and principal, and recently transitioned to the district office as a coordinator of assessment and accountability. I'm the one that took the pay cut. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know. Um, serving in all these positions gives me the breadth of experience, community connection to lead effectively at the district level. The path of homegrown leadership is what we want to encourage, not discourage here in PVUSD. At the March 8th board meeting, you sent the message that our years of service and expertise are not valued. And if we stay, we have no future of advancement. We generally align with our unions because as managers, we have no negotiating power, no bargaining unit, and remember, many of us were PVFT or CSEA. We left teaching for the opportunity to grow as leaders and have a positive impact on a greater number of students. We were working around the clock, often behind the scenes. We do whatever is needed to support our sites, and we're called to cover absences gladly, take on any extra workload just to ensure our students are safe and receive adequate instruction. Our management scale lags behind many of the, in the state, topping out after only seven years. If we leave as is, as is, we'll see more turnover, causing disruption at sites, and interruption of district and state mandates. We are already seeing many of our highly qualified colleagues, lifelong people, lifelong employees of PVUSD leave because they can't continue to be compensated less than what they're worth. Talented, capable, and invested, invested administrators are essential to PVUSD success, and I hope you will prioritize this. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. My name is Elaine Parker, and this is my eighth year as principal at Ann Soldo and my 32nd year in our district, all with PVUSD. I take great pride in all that I do to support our students, our families, and our staff. The demands of the school principal have increased since our world changed on March 13th, 2020. Since the pandemic, there has been a noticeable increase in what we have been asked to do without an increase in compensation. We are asking the compensation reflect the expectations. 
The rate of pay is accelerating quickly in other districts. We have been paying very close attention to this, and the fact that we have lost many skilled and dedicated colleagues to other districts is a clear message that our administrators are not properly paid. We are asking that our board change that narrative and increase our pay. I would like to share some family data from this year's Youth Truth Survey for which I am grateful to have received as it shows my leadership and dedication make a difference. We chose safety and culture as our site focus. 89% feel valued by our school. 91% feel Ansoldo creates a friendly environment. 88% feel that our school's policies are administrated fairly and consistently. And now some direct quotes from families. The principal knows the students by name and this makes them feel valued. The principal is very attentive to the students and families. She knows students and parents and greets us with kindness. Our school is very safe and has great mem staff members from teachers to office personnel to administration. I share this data with you so you can see that our job matters and makes a huge difference in the daily lives of students, families, and staff. In the eight years that I have been principal, I have not received a school board member visit other than an organized group visit to see our bond projects. I invite you anytime to come and see firsthand our beautiful school so that you can be with the students and staff and families for whom you advocate and so that you can see how your decisions affect our community. To my fellow colleagues. Thank you. Well done. Hello and good evening, um, President Holm, School Board Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. It's really hard to stand here today, <laughs> but I'm gonna try to get through this. Usually we're here talking about all the amazing work that we're doing at our schools, myself, my school, and all my colleagues here. But tonight, I feel like we have to prove our worth, and it hurts. I'm Jackie Medina, the principal of Starlight Elementary School. Actually, Dr. Medina, as of last week. <laughs> I'm here tonight to encourage you to approve the salary increase put before you tonight, as well as the additional increases that should come as PVFT just um, settled again with the district. So it's tonight and future raises that I'm asking for. I'm not sure why we don't have a Me Too clause, but it would probably help avoid this predicament in the future. It seems we've always operated that way as a district. I've been with PVUF, PV, excuse me, PVUSD for 18 years as a dual language teacher, assistant principal, and now principal for seven years. I love my school. Our students, staff, family, and community make my, <laughs> sorry, make my role as principal really rewarding. I love it. However, this job itself is grueling. It's not lovable all the time, especially since the pandemic and the, the staffing shortages. Every day, I wake up at four in the morning, I do my desk work so when I get to school, I'm completely available to my site. I have to be ready every day to be the custodian, yard duty, health assistant, substitute teacher, parent liaison, counselor, behavior intervention, and the list can go on every single day. I call it my morning hustle <laughs> when I have to figure out what I need to do that day. The meeting on March 8th where the board declined to accept our raises really stung. We've been patiently waiting for all of the staff members in the district to get their well-deserved raises, but now it's our turn. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, that was two minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next three speakers, Alec Vanderwood, Jack Reed, and Connie Williams. Hello, uh, President Holmes, Dr. Rodriguez, trustees. Um, my name is Alec Vanderwood. I am a systems engineer for the district. I've worked here for 17 years. Um, we, uh, there is four of people in my position as well as a network engineer and we provide basically the technology that gets used in the district. We make sure that students have Chromebooks to use, um, software to use, that they're all rostered in that software so teachers can use them. Um, 
I also work with uh, our ELOP, Extended Learning Department, uh, and make sure that the reporting is happening to the state. Um, every year, multiple times throughout the year, we have to report our attendance numbers uh, to the state, which enables us to continue receiving funding. And uh, so I play a pretty big role in that. So um, it's uh, unfortunate to see watch board meetings and see kind of this divisive uh, nature between PFT and administration. Um, it really takes away from what I feel should just be teamwork. Um, my job really doesn't end at five o'clock. We uh, are constantly uh, on call. There's many times where I get called at, you know, middle of the night to take care of something uh, so that when teachers and students show up the next day, uh, they can learn and, and uh, they need to do. So uh, I urge you to uh, pass the raise before you. Um, at 261 days, that's my calendar. Um, my per day is pretty, uh, <laughs> it's low. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's low, I don't know. It's a, it's a good salary, but um, it is uh, unfortunate to think that, that we're not gonna be minutes. compensated. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, President Holmes, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Jack Reed. I am the principal of Renaissance Continuation High School, and I'm a former GTA, Gonzales Teachers Association Union President and a Gonzales City Council member. I want to say that I felt very offended in the board meeting when the board uh, refused to give first the confidential employee, not their raise, and then denied raises to all management. After being told that uh, P PVFT received their raises, that was a slap in our faces. As your, one of your newest administrators, I've only been in this district since October, I haven't seen such divisiveness on a board before over such an issue. I haven't seen board members call out other board members um, over issues. That, that can't happen. That's not good to your constituents. Your principles make sure that you stay legally compliant in all of your dealings. Our teachers have enough on their plate. We are the ones that guide them and make sure that they do what they need to do in order to make sure that the education that our children receive is at the highest level, at the highest expectation. And then you sit and say you, you need a study over the, the um, salaries after you heard uh, district employees get up here and tell you it's in the budget, it's already budgeted, we already anticipated this. I don't know what you're planning to discover today unless it's more money, unless it's a larger raise. You already are on the hook for 20 because you've already settled with PFT, but don't waste our time by saying you need to study salaries. You know you're the lowest paid. You know you have a, a history of not having uh, administrators, so please do what's right for us who Thank do you. what's right for our kids every day. Thank you. Good evening, President Holmes, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. My name is Connie Williams, and I have been an educator um, and instructor at Watsonville Aptos Santa Cruz Adult Education since 2020, so I'm new. <laughs> but as a health careers instructor, I work with a team of management leaders that have created a supportive work environment and have helped me grow as a teacher under the direction of Dr. Nancy Bilicic. Our adult school helps students learn to speak English, pass the GED, and gain career technical skills so that they can help their families and make a difference in the community. Despite the positive outcomes achieved at our school, 
One of two of our administrators recently resigned, leaving many instructors feeling upset and vulnerable. I asked him why he was leaving. He said he had accepted a position at another adult school offering higher income and future salary increase. Um, it is important to recognize the valuable assets that an employee with tenure at our district brings to the team. Our school district must try to stop valuable management members from seeking employment elsewhere. In addition, each time that we lose a member of our management team, it costs the district money for onboarding that could have been used for programs that benefit our students. Um, management should receive a raise that would cover the cost of living in Santa Cruz County, which has surged exponentially in the last few years. Since the teachers and classified employees have already made agreements regarding salary increase, I ask the board to consider raising the management team's salary to reflect the amount that is currently in the budget, which is at least 4.5% increase. And I appreciate your time and consideration. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Dr. Nancy Bilicic, Bill Sunderland, and Angelica Renteria. Good evening, President Holm, trustees, Pre Superintendent Rodriguez, and cabinet. I'm Nancy Bilicic. I'm the director of Watsonville Aptos Santa Cruz Adult Education. And I have to tell you, I've always felt proud to work for PVUSD as I'm homegrown, meaning I was educated in PVUSD schools. And I eventually returned home after college because I wanted to come back to our community. And as you know, I've been in leadership positions throughout my career. I've been where you are now, trying to approve salaries for various groups when I was on another, well, city council. But now I find myself in a position to advocate for my own raise as part of a management team. Let me say, I've always felt strong support from you, the trustees. Every time I've given a presentation, you've been right here for me. Well, here I am again, feeling f support from you regarding adult education programs. I think I talked to you about a month ago. And where the teachers and the classified employees and management, we all work together to provide the very best for our students. But do you not consider me necessary as part of the team? Is there a lack of respect for, of my position? I've never felt that before. Managers, as you know, work 24-7. Many like you. You're on the phones, too. You've got constituents that you have to talk with. And we're always trying to find solutions to the many challenges we encounter. I hope that I have misunderstood your lack of support for our 4.5% raise that we deserve. After all of my encounters with you and the respect I have previously felt, I find this very difficult to believe that you don't respect or value me enough to consider this raise. All managers Thank you. work exceptionally long and hard hours to, pr that to was improve. Two minutes. Thank you. Yeah, I got you. Improve <laughs> student success for PVSD. Yes. I'm Bill Sunderland. I coordinate the driver's ed program, managed through the adult ed. We lost a really excellent administrator, very productive, great to work with. This fall, he'll have two children in college at the same time, had to go over the hill to make more money. Really lost the district. Thank you. Good evening, Board of Trustees, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Cabinet. As a director of a very successful child development program in this district, I'm here with my team and along with other district administrators expressing our thoughts of this, on this agenda item. Together, 
this group over here behind me, we represent over 100 years of experience in this district. And I don't need to take two minutes of your time to stand here and remind you of what I do. As very recently, you had the opportunity to hear about the hard work of the group of individuals standing next to me and the successes of the program we run. Instead, I'm here to urge you to wake up and to hear and pay close attention to what my fellow administrators are here to say, as each one of them represent the work we all do in this district. On March 8, Irene and I came to this meeting prepared to share our successes with a beautiful presentation of the, of the work we all do. And at the end of the meeting, we felt we left feeling undervalued, underappreciated, and humiliated for what took place in that meeting. With all due respect, please know that we feel that we should not be here to beg you for a consideration on a 4.5% salary increase. We are here to urge you to seriously consider taking a close look to management salary schedules compared to other districts in an effort to retain the wonderful and committed administrators you are about to lose if you don't align your priorities or change your retention strategies. This group behind us. Please know that some of the coordinators standing before me or behind me make less money than the average preschool teacher in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Elaine um, Legorieta, Karen Lane, and Rich Moran, I believe it is. President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and members of the board. I am Elaine Legoretta. I'm a retired principal and the interim principal of Lakeview Middle School. I also served as an interim assistant principal at Paro last year. I've been retired for three years, working for one and a half. 22 is the number of site administration openings last year, site admin. Five, the number of site administrators who returned to the classroom because they could make more money and work fewer days with less responsibility. Four, is the number of site admin positions that I know of that have remained unfilled last year. 136 is the number of hours Lakeview administration has subbed as of today on top of their site leadership responsibilities. Those 136 hours are the equivalent of three and a half weeks. How can we make up that time? Longer days in the nine to 10? Hours that everyone knows that is a minimum expectation. No, it's about 10 to 11. No time off or extra pay for this extra work. I encourage board members to spend a day with the site administrator to experience a day in the life. The list is inexhaustible. If something isn't done, it is a site administrator who must get it done. If something isn't done, our district will continue to lose administrators. Would you recommend your child be an administrator, administrative role in PVUSD? I did, two of them. And they are excellent according to our superintendent, <laughs> assistant superintendents, the teachers they work with, and the numerous parents and community members who see me at school and in the grocery store. PVUSD says they want homegrown administrators. How are we encouraging them into leadership? It's not the pay. Their teachers make more money than their supervising principal. Hi, I'm Karen Lane. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez, President Home and Board Trustees. My name is Dave Hopkins. I will be speaking on behalf of the Karen Lane, the principal of Valencia Elementary, who is not able to be here this evening. These are some of her words. I have been part of PVUSD since 1978 when I started my educational journey as a kindergartner at Rio Del Mar Elementary School. This is my 27th year as an employee, 17 years in the classroom, and 10 years in a, as an administrator. I've always felt like PVUSD was my home. However, that changed on March 8th, 
when the board voted not to approve the raise for its hardworking administrators. For the first time in all my years in PVUFD, I have felt the district may no longer be a place for me. This is my seventh year as a Valencia principal, and it has been rewarding yet challenging since year one due to school closure and relocating to three different sites. With tremendous work, we gradually recovered, then came COVID. During the pandemic, when others worked from home, we administrators were on site every day. We spent countless hours reimagining our schools and adapting our staff and students to virtual learning while, su while simultaneously implementing vast COVID protocols and safety mandates. This meant being accessible around the clock, prioritizing work, often over our own families and our mental health. It has been the most demanding and exhausting work I have ever done. And I was a kindergarten teacher for many years, so that's saying something. <laughs> I'm the principal, but on many days, <coughs> I'm also the academic coordinator or office personnel. I've stepped in as health assistant, counselor, custodian, cafeteria assistant, yard supervisor, teacher, or instructional assistant. I do it all on any given day. Our management pay scale has only seven steps, and I've been on step seven for the last, last three school years. This is currently no room for financial growth in this position for me outside of this raise. This board has approved raises for our certificated and classified employees valuing the work that they do. And it's time to do the same for our administrators, all of us. And if you all, if, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, President Home, uh, trustees, uh, Dr. Rodriguez, cabinet. Don't worry, I'll get through it. I'm an educator. In the 17 years, I've served the students, teachers, and families of this district. <sighs> My effort as an educator has taken many forms. I began as a teacher at PV High School, and as a teacher, my commitment to my students, colleagues, and families compelled me to work far beyond the contract hours, far beyond my job description, and of course, far beyond the calendar. I wrote curriculum, collaborated with partners like Monterey Bay Aquarium, Watsonville Wetzland Watch, the city of Watsonville, and built programs for our students and for our community. As an after-site coordinator at Pajaro Valley School, High School, my commitment to my students, teachers, and families compelled me to work far beyond my contract hours, far beyond my job description, and of course, far beyond the days on the calendar. As an assistant principal at Pajaro Valley High School, as an assistant principal at Aptos High School, as the principal of Aptos Junior High School, and now as the principal of Minty White Elementary, my commitment to my students, teachers, and families compels me. Each of my colleagues, fellow educators, can make these same types of statements. To consider through your actions that one group of educators is more deserving than another is detrimental to us all. Therefore, tonight, I urge you to act in a manner that demonstrates your understanding of the fact that we are all educators, and we come in many forms. Tonight, I urge you to consider all educators, and I urge you to value us all for our commitment to this community and to our students. Otherwise, the administrative vacancies will grow and we will fail to attract, hire, and retain the types of educators we desperately need, the leaders we desperately need, and that our students deserve. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Katie Criscunas, Amelia Martinez, and Celine Munoz. Good evening, <coughs> excuse me, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and trustees. I am an incredibly dedicated educator in this community. I was born in this community. PVUSD is my family, and my kids are currently attending school at Freedom Elementary. I lead in this district because the leaders in this district saw a leader in me. I was once 
of Lencia Viking, a um, Aptos Junior High Sea Dragon, uh, Aptos High School Mariner, a substitute teacher, a student teacher, and eventually an environmental science, an AP environmental science teacher at Aptos High School. I'm driven by the passion to do the work here in this district. I am student-centered and I love this community. My work ends when the job gets done because I care about the kids that I am privileged to serve. I arrive at work at 7.30 a.m. and most days leave at 7 p.m. And some people often wonder, what am I doing past 7 p.m.? And some of my colleagues have already spoken about this. When we're covering classrooms or working the numerous other positions in an effort to best make that instructional program available to kids, I'm making up for it after hours. That doesn't include supervising dances till 11 p.m. or supervising football games close to midnight or responding to student safety concerns um, or wellness uh, concerns that come late at night or on the weekends. I respond to safety alerts such as gaggle, stop it, and reports from community members all waking hours beyond the calendar days. And when I can't respond, I know I can rely on district leadership to respond to those. Sorry. I am privileged to be the principal of Lakeview Middle School next year. And I want the board to know that I was asked to pursue a position that was $100,000 more than Lakeview Middle for next year. I declined. Thank you. President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, members of the board, and greater PVUSD community. My name is Mila Martinez, and I am reading the statement on behalf of my mom, Erin Legaretta. I am the proud new principal of H.A. Hyde Elementary School and the former academic coordinator of Amesti Elementary. There is a running joke inside administration about a single line in our job description, duties as assigned. The joke refers to the all too clear reality that anything that isn't taken care of, no matter how big or small, falls on the shoulders of site administrators. So far this year, I have been a kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade teacher, along with lead custodian, health clerk, tech support, and compost order, on top of the job you have hired me to do. We do all of this not only because it needs to be done and there's often literally nobody else to do it, but because at our core, we know the strength of our schools and communities comes from us. However, we have been strong and our work and dedication has gone unnoticed and unappreciated for too long. Site administrators are working under conditions that are not acceptable, but most importantly, are not sustainable. I am currently putting in nine to 10 hours a day at school, then going home and working another two to three on my actual job late at night after putting my youngest daughter to bed. This is all just to maintain a school not to continue to move it forward. Many of us have remained in our positions, but an even more noticeable, noticeable amount have not. At the start of this school year, my principal partner at Amesti, Carlos, and I were one of the four teams remaining intact from the time we started in 2019 together. In four years, all 32 PVUSD schools experienced significant administration change with the exception of four. We have heard a lot about our current teacher shortage, but we must also acknowledge the administration shortage in the same breath. Administrators are the backbone of a school, and for every you smile you see, please know there are equal tears and sighs of exhaustion behind closed doors. Thank you for your time. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Selena Munoz, and I am the proud principal of Rolling Hills Middle School. I am one to avoid the spotlight and public speaking, but the meeting on March 8th was extremely disturbing to me, so I had to speak my truth today. I couldn't shake the feeling that it was a political stunt that was further creating more division in our district. I've been in this district for two decades. I've worked my way up from a BT to a special day class teacher and now an administrator. As an administrator for the largest middle school, I've been covering classrooms, I have been an office assistant, a custodian, campus security, and an interpreter. I even know how to put in carpet. I have been <laughs> even doing academic assessments for special education to ensure compliance. All of this to ensure that my students, families, and staff were taken care of. I take pride in making my school a safe place for all. Rolling Hills is the only middle school with an international academy with an ED program and currently about to start a dual language program. I started this year with seven vacancies 
in my first year as principal, and despite that, I was committed to not having my teacher sub more than once a week. That meant myself and my assistant principal had to take on days of full subbing. My principal work then had to happen after hours. I have teachers on my campus that make more than I do. I have siblings who are teachers over the hill who make more than I do. They don't have to answer their phones for gag alerts at midnight and coordinate services for families in the middle of the night for a student who is threatening to hurt himself or herself. They don't have to work 12 plus hours um, days or put on Saturday programming or be CLIA certified to test students and staff. All this without any compensation. It is expected of leaders to be well informed for the sake of their community and I encourage you all to be better informed when making decisions that impact our students and our community. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Dr. Ivan Alcaraz, uh, Ben Benavides, and Peggy Poo. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Dr. Rodriguez. I introduced uh, many times, I'm Dr. Ivan Alcaraz, and I'm now the Director of Student Services, but before that, I was the principal at one of your middle schools as well. I'm not only an administrator of this district, but I'm also a homegrown student. I am actually a PVUSD, uh, product of PVUSD schools and also a member of this community. My passion for students and my love for this community fuel my commitment to work hard for PVUSD every day. I've been very fortunate to work alongside a community of leaders and managers who care deeply about our students in our entire community. As educa ed educational leaders, we recognize a high level of responsibility that we bear, many consistently working long hours, long days, on weekends, and even sacrificing their own family time. These sacrifices should not go unnoticed. I just want to share with you that this past weekend, I worked along alongside a coordinator, an assistant superintendent, a principal and an academic coordinator to maintain one school site safe. So Saturday and Sunday on several hours trying to ensure that all our students in that community were safe. That was unnoted. I want to make sure that the, the board recognizes that the, that the decision that they made on the march to increase the salary had a tremendous impact on the culture of our organization. This decision has created a narrative of us versus them and has further alienated us from the unity. When I joined administration, I did not feel separate from my colleagues, from the teachers, from the counselors, from the classified staff. On March, I did. Without a doubt, through this action, you have placed more worth on one group and have devalued the work of another group. Every educator in our system matters, and we all play a critical role in supporting our students, parents, and community. There's no one group that is more deserving or worth less than the other. I want to note that we are all committed and work hard towards the same goal, student success. Good evening, President Holm, Superintendent Rodriguez, Board of Trustees, Cabinet. Um, my name is Ben Benavides, and I am the principal, the very proud principal of Cesar Chavez Middle School. And I've been with the district for 32 years. Started in 1991 as a language arts and social studies teacher at EA Hall. In fact, I believe I taught one of the board members. Um, my wife grew up in Watsonville, attended McQuitty Elementary School, EA Hall, Watsonville High. My three children, Sarah, Helen, and Benjamin, all attended PVSD, graduated from Watsonville High School. You know, I can say with sort of the utmost humility, I've given my life to this district. Um, but, it, you know, it's, I, it just upsets me that all of us, you know, and I speak as probably the senior administrator. I've been an administrator for 17 years, nine years as a principal. I'm the only remaining middle school principal from last year. 
my assistant, Jason Rooney. He's the only remaining assistant principal from last year. We offer our staff, our students, our community continuity. We offer them knowledge. We offer them the feeling that their children are in good hands. And I'm so proud of our classified staff at our school and our district. Is it time? It is, thank you. Well, <laughs> I just want to say I'm proud of the classified staff. I'm proud of my certificated staff. They deserve their raises. They do. Thank you. But so do we. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees. My name is Peggy Pugh, and as a 30-plus year resident of Santa Cruz County, I have served this community in PDUSD for 25 years. I began my career as an instructional assistant, was a proud teacher for 16 years, and PVFT member as well as negotiator. I was then assistant principal, principal, and now executive director of teaching and learning. That was me. In my 25 years, I have remained committed to this community. Long hours and weekends have always been a constant for me. It's just how I'm built. And my motivation has always been the same, love and respect for the community I serve. As a leader, I am supported by Dr. Rodriguez, her cabinet, and our broader district. I have been committed to our students, staff, and families, and I feel seen by our district leaders because they see the commitment that I make to our students. I've been recognized by local and educational community. I've won awards. I was a teacher of the year. I was a principal of the year, and I was just named the Aptos Chamber of Commerce Woman of the Year. So I get accolades. But I don't do anything I do for accolades. I do it because I love and care and respect the community that I serve. My colleagues and I do not need accolades to keep working for our students. We do, however, need to know that our board understands the work that we do and that you appreciate the critical role administrators play in supporting our students, families, and the broader community. I work for our students and our families because I love them. I also do the work that I do for my own family. I am the primary income earner in my family. You saw me in the presentation that Dr. Rodriguez made. I made the mistake, some would say on paper, of taking a pay cut two times from a 16-year veteran teacher to assistant principal, executive, principal to executive director. So I did it because I care, and please support us. Thank you. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Carol Turley, Lauren Adcock, and Ruth Boogie Young. Good evening, my name's Carol Turley. I spent 13 years in classrooms in PVUSD. My father and stepmother, Owen and Marcia Hand, were long-term teachers for PVUSD, each spending at least 30 years in your schools. Both of my daughters went to your schools. I'm committed to PVUSD. I volunteer, or at least I did until COVID at Watsonville High. I still spend some time at Watsonville High. I'm often there at 6 in the morning, where I see Assistant Principal Joe at 6 in the morning, opening things up. If I drive by in the evening when there's a sporting event, who do I see? I see Joe. <laughs> and I believe that is true with every one of your sites. And it sounds like I spend more time at some of your sites than some of you do. And that's shameful. You should know what's happening on your campuses. You should know what these people are doing for less pay than they deserve. We all know that the teachers in PVUSD are paid less than teachers in other districts in the area. We all know that the classifieds are paid less. We all know that the administration is paid less. But instead of infighting, we should look at where the fight really should be. The fight really should be at the allocation from the state when schools in Carmel get four times per student than you do. 
The math doesn't work. Obviously, you're going to end up paying people less. But right now, you have the money in the budget. You have a budget that calls for a 4.5% increase for these people. And why you're even talking about should we or shouldn't we, I have no idea. But I do think it was a really good idea that you gave Dr. Rodriguez the opportunity to, in black and well, it was in color and white, um, <laughs> where the money's coming from, where the money goes, how, what the comparison is between the other districts that are similar to this district and the districts that are in our area. It's shameful, and I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Board, uh, President Holm, trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. My name's Lauren Adcock. I've been a voting constituent of trustee area six for 14 years. I have been an employee of Pajaro Valley for just over 11 years. Seven of those years were in a CSEA covered position in the payroll department. Those years in my CSEA covered position prepared me to take the next steps of becoming the manager of payroll and benefits. We hear a lot about the district office and though we are not in front of students daily, we do have a large impact on the overall function of the district and the employees that are in front of the students every day. I could list off all the things that I do, like how we process two payrolls a month for roughly 2,100 employees, that I report data for Bureau, of the Labor for Bureau of Labor Statistics, CDE, and School Services. I process all retros for this district. I create all salary schedules for this district. Any board approved salary that is, is approved, I handle. I have six employees. We also would like to leave you with the fact that tonight, the cost of living affects all of us. We are one team, and by not granting an equal raise, shows we don't matter. We matter, administration matters, cabinet matters. If you didn't have us, we wouldn't have a school district. Good evening, President Holm. Board of Trustees and Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Ruth Bugion and I'm the Risk and Safety Manager for this district. Um, my role as this Risk and Safety Manager is frankly to oversee all of the insurance programs and try to save this district some money through those programs as well. You will most recently see me working on the Pajaro flood claim that I am currently working on. And what I also do is I oversee a lot of the safety programs, so comprehensive safety plans, you'll see me doing some ALICE trainings, and you'll see me trying to support our students as much as possible. I review accident reports, I try to do risk mitigation factors, risk assessments, and all of that in between. I'm also homegrown. I'm a student, a migrant student of this district. I attended all of the schools in this district and what I graduated from Watsonville High. <laughs> and I went and did my undergrad. I went to law school. Um, I got my Juris Doctorate and I wanted to come back to this district. And it's a privilege to be here and frankly, it's because of the fact that this is my community that I continue to come here every day. And I love our students. My husband is an educator, and we are committed to this community. So I stand in the front lines in defending this district when allegations are made against it. And I want you to know that my work is valuable. So please support us in acknowledging that what we do matters. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Rich Ariano, Colleen Bugayang, and David Kinney. Uh, good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. Um, proud to stand before you. I'm Rich Ariano, the Director of Purchasing. And uh, in preparation for this meeting, I did a lot of reflecting on kind of my journey through PVSD. So I just wanted to share that. You don't get a chance to share that very often. It started for me at uh, eight years old, Valencia, Aptos Junior High, Aptos High School. Uh, fast. I was also raised by a CSE member. I wanted to make sure that, you know, my, my mom worked for CSE and, and shaped a lot of the things that I do in my approach to work. Um, fast forward to 2005, I was hired as a CSE member to de deliver textbooks for this whole district. Um, little crowd participation. Anybody that remembers textbook rich can, can raise your hand. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, my, you know, I've, I've revisited some of my reviews. I keep all that kind of stuff. I'm kind of weird like that. Uh, a lot of the things were positive, hardworking, you know, helping schools and teachers do what they need to do. Um, fast forward again, 2017, I found myself as the interim director of the purchasing, purchasing department, scared to death of what was to come, right? Like not knowing what, what it even meant to, to do those kinds of things. Um, I was hired to be the director of purchasing for these reasons. And I still have the sticky note on my, uh, my monitor in my office. When Dr. Rodriguez told me I was going to be part of this leadership team, it was because positive, worked hard, student focused, not because I was a purchasing guru or I could do all these different things to, to get the best prices. I, I do that, but you know that I didn't have that, but I could do those things very, very well and make them work. So the, the life I live now that is, is hard with what I've heard transpire at recent board meetings is I'm the director of purchasing for, for all of you much more than I'm a father, a husband, a son, a brother, all those things. Like I answer that call because it's in support of what they do face to face with teachers and students every single day. So the thing that I, the question I have for all of you is what, you know, eight year old me mattered, CSEA me mattered. What is different about me now? And who do you think we are, right? We, we matter, and I'd love to hear that from you. A little shorter than him. Um, good evening, President Holm, Board, Dr. Rodriguez, and Cabinet. My name is Colleen Boogieon. I'm the Director of Fiscal Services. Um, I've been an employee with PVUSD for 30 years plus. Um, I started as a CSEA member. My job mattered then, my job matters now. I'm usually first in, first out. Um, I mean, first in, last out of my department. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm usually there 12 hours until the custodian kicks me out. Um, we sub. For our department, we don't have subs coming in, so when people in our department are out, we do their work. Their work doesn't go away. We do their work, and then after their work is done, we stay and do our own. So um, with that, I do want to address some of the rhetoric that I feel has been done by a few and that I feel like you all have bought into. Um, my job is to handle the $40 million budget. I have to stand here sometimes and swallow how my job is not good enough. Uh, it's wrong. Um, the work that I work every day so hard to do, I hear people who know nothing about the budget, nothing about how hard it is, come in and say that it's wrong. It's like my child coming to me and say, Mom, I know you still have money in the account because you still have checks. It's not that easy. It really isn't, and it's hurtful. And I, they, you guys bought into it by saying, now we have to bring ex another external auditor. Do you know how many times we're audited by different organizations? We report to federal, state, local. We do hundreds of reports all the time, and we're constantly being audited by federal, state, and local, and independent auditors. I just want to say that we all matter. Thank you all for everything Thank that you. you do. We matter. Good evening, Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the board, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, my name is David Kenny, and I'm a systems engineer here at Paro Valley Unified. I've been here for just over nine years now. Um, I have in total about 34 years in public sector work and I learned really early that getting the job done doesn't matter if it's within a certain or uh, within a time frame of the work day that that was the most important thing. You have a wonderful group of people st uh, sitting behind me and supporting us and supporting you and supporting this community um, that work until the job is done. In the last seven days, I have spent three of those three nights at home working at least one to two hours, and on the rest of those days, I have at least checked my email to make sure there was no emergencies that need to be taken care of. My last two vacation days were interrupted for my anniversary, 
in order to take care of emergencies at the office. Have a good evening. Please do the right thing. Good night. Our next three speakers are Allison Sloan, Heather Gorman, and Andrea Willey. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, our board, our community. I'm proud and honored to stand before you. I am Dr. Allison Hank Sloan. I'm also Dr. AHS. The initials work perfectly with Aptos High School. And I'm glad to be here. I moved to this community to return to where my parents are. My father is even here in the audience. My father has gone to every single game with me. I'm proud to be near my family and in this community. And the job we do as principals never ends, whether it's my job or whether it's the job of all the principals here. It is a lifestyle, as Peggy has called it. <laughs> It's about observations, data, weekly and daily announcements. It's supporting our staff, our students, our families. It's going to games and athletic events and schmoozing with everybody there and also making sure we know the game. I had to learn water polo. <laughs> it's about family calls. It's about emails. It's about safety. It's about being a therapist, being a soundboard, being a maintenance liaison, being a traffic monitor, being a free substitute doing HR work, teacher cheerleader, a mentor, a thought partner, researcher, social media master, front office assistant, and for me, being a mariner, a captain. And it's a time to meet with all to know about students, academics, community, and families across the district. It is at least an 11-hour job a day, and that's at the minimum. It's about weekend calls about campus. It's also about me reaching out to all of our assistant principals, and they're doing the same thing, as well as the managers across the district. There are student letters to respond to. There's job fairs, there's updates, there's stop and gaggles that happen on our weekend. It could be seven in the morning and we look down at our phone and we see something about a safety concern and we're making a call to a family. It could be our child's birthday and we're making a phone call to a family. Those are things that don't stop. We never turn off our job. I made the choice to be here. I changed from another district. I moved to be close to my family. I took a 25% pay cut. I turned down jobs that were 15 to $75,000 higher. I knew the benefits were good, and I know that th this was a place where I would get support, and I love the team that I work with and all the people in the district. But I ask Thank that the you. board understand who we are and please support us and financially support us so we can continue. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. I'm Heather Gorman, the district's only SELPA director. I'm here tonight because I'm concerned about the well-being of our district. Recent board decisions are creating a destabilizing effect in the district. I personally have worked for the district for about 30 years, 16 years as a teacher in both general education and special education. I started out as an instructional assistant in this district. From there, I was an assistant principal, a program director, and now the SELPA director. This is my community. My son and I both live here. And as the SELPA director, I attend statewide meetings, work on litigious cases, facilitate IEP meetings. I have a wealth of knowledge about special education law, and I support students in our district to access a free, appropriate public education. I manage close to 700 staff, write reports to the state, while also getting up at 4 a.m. to support kids getting on the bus at the fairgrounds recently and scraping worms off the sidewalk of Duncan Holbert School so that the kids wouldn't be afraid to walk into their school district or school building. I'm, investi I'm invested in the district and the good work that is being done here. I believe that all students here can not only learn but thrive. Without this board valu valuing the significant contributions to our administrative and management staff, we will see attrition increase. The commitment, dedication, and time my certificated classified management and administrative colleagues make every day after working hours on weekends and at these board meetings speaking to collective commitment to our schools, speak to the collective commitment to our schools, students, families, each other, and the community. I hope the board will, su will support all PBUSD staff and the hard work that we do. Please reconsider and bring this action item back to the board in April.
Good evening, President Holm, trustees, and Superintendent Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Andrea Carlos Willie, and I am the Impact and Resource Development Officer here at PVUSD. My children attended PVUSD schools, and my family, uh, my children are the fifth generation of our family to live in Watsonville. My great great grandfather was the class valedictorian of the 1884 class of Watsonville High. This is, <laughs> this is my community. Um, this district is an educational community, but it's also our educational family. As the Impact and Resource Development Officer, I see our certificated and classified management arriving early in the morning, working into the evenings, and responding by text and email during their weekends. They embody a collective commitment and dedication that ensures our schools are safe places for student learning, that our staff are supported, and that our families are engaged as their children's first teachers, and also that our many, many community partners in the Pajaro Valley are valued as members of this educational family. <laughs> These PBUSD leaders who are here this evening before you and speaking are held in high esteem among organizations, agencies, and individuals in this valley and beyond, receiving local, state, and national recognition for their work. I ask that you affirm and validate their hard work, their expertise, and love for these students, our educational community, and our Pajaro Valley. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Nellie Boggs, Chris Webb, and Roddy Kirkman. Good evening, board. With all the admin comments we've heard, um, you know, they're true. Uh, and if I didn't know that this was a meeting to study the administrative salary schedule, I think that this was a, a group of our teachers. And some of you were some of our members at one point. So <clears throat> I myself, am, well, we are grateful. I know that we have many members who are very grateful for their admin. But I am grateful for the administration that I've had the opportunity to work with in this district in my 16 years here in PBUSD. I learned a lot from their, them and their leadership and still learn from some as I work with them in a different capacity now that I am the president of the PVFT. And I am aware of the amount of work that they do. Um, that's not lost on us. As I stated in my March 8th comment, under item, I think it was 9.8, the administrative salary increase, we did not deny or ask for there to be a denial of an increase to our administrators, we actually thanked them and said they deserve it. What we asked was for their salary schedules to be separated from the agenda item of the cabinet salary schedule. That's what we asked. Our administrators do need an increase on, in the, on their salary schedule. But when we looked at what the cabinet presented to you, for their salary schedule, their salaries are increasing by 5 to 12%. So I don't know when that became equivalent to 4.5%. That's why we wanted you guys to separate them. I, and it was until the end of that agenda item that actually I believe it was, um, well, I know it was Danny Dodge Jr., where he said, why don't we do that? Thing that Nelly suggested and separate them and it was Dr. Holm who said I don't want to do that so thank you that these items should minutes. be separated thanks that's absolutely right they should be separated they should have each group should have to stand on their own just like every other employee group had to and um, another issue that I have is with the the retro raise, because basically this would mean that the the former admin of Renaissance and the former assistant uh, uh, assistant superintendent of secondary, the people who broke Renaissance would be getting a raise, 
and they they weren't good admin. And here's what I mean by that: they cost us um, WASC approval, and and I the fact that they're going off bad information from Dr. Rodriguez carries no weight with me. We should not be just following orders when they're wrong. Um, they also cut the after-school program. They cut the independent studies. They cut the ELD program. When an English language specialist confirmed a teacher's concern that the old assistant um, soup, um, her, her change was gonna compromise English language learner's ability to graduate, when she proved with the data that that was true, she got reassigned. Um, they also cut the department chairs stipend they cut the lead teacher stipend, and the lead teachers are the ones who are basically become admin when the admin are not there at Renaissance. Um, they also presided over the loss of sports at Renaissance. Think about it. You're, I, I, don't, I don't feel good about having the people who are responsible for Renaissance not having sports for a while, and, not, and probably not soccer this year, getting a raise. I think um, with that in mind, that the raise should go to uh, the people who are still here, admin, who are still here, or maybe like they serve 80% at least of this year. That way you could, you could not reward people for um, taking the yes man behavior too far. Also, I think um, the Renaissance admin presently should be paid closer to what um, high school admin are paid or at least closer to middle school because they're the sole admin and they carry a lot of weight. They don't have ACs to back them up. Um, thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees. Um, wow, I had a whole thing written to say, but as Nelly stated, it's it's uh, it sucks having to come up here and beg for a raise, huh? We do this every year. It's hard. <laughs> um, we know, especially in our positions in union leadership, how important good administrators are. I'm lucky to have worked with good administrators, and I'm lucky to still work with good administrators in this role. Um, good administrators are out there putting in hard work every single day, supporting their staff, stepping in to cover classes, cover vacancies, cover absences. They are stepping in to connect with students, to reach out to families. They are doing all of the different jobs you listed, just like our teachers say they do as well. Um, and my personal favorite, they are human beings, and they treat their staff as human beings. That's one of the biggest things I hear from folks. Um, as Nellie said, and as she said at our March 8th meeting, we were 100% in support of their salary increase. Good administrators are the reason we have positive working environments and positive school sites. Without them, our teachers can't function and our classified staff can't function to their best ability. Um, I know from hearing from staff that some of those good administrators went back into the classroom this year. And those staff members are hurting because of that. So my issue is, again, as Nellie stated, the presented 4.5% increase actually on the salary schedule presented to the board on March 8th would compute to an 11.8% percent increase for the assistant soups of elementary, secondary, and curriculum instruction. Also, you guys need to Thank unionize. You. Look at Berkeley Unified. Our next three speakers, Nancy Zuniga, Georgia Terrell, and Les Forster. Good evening, Board President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. My name is Nancy Zuniga. I am the Assistant Principal of High School Programs for the Expanded Learning Department. I want to start by thanking all the administrators behind me for their hard work and dedication. I have the utmost respect and admiration for everything you do day in, day out, as I'm very new to the administration. I have the, oh, sorry. My role is to provide support to the three comprehensive high schools and two alternative high schools. I oversee a comprehensive after-school program that includes academic support, credit recovery, and enrichment activities. All of our schools are unique 
which means working with each school to create a program that aligns with the needs of the students. The breakdown of this means I support Aptos High with over 100 students daily and 10 staff members. At PV High, we provide daily support to 175 students and oversee 16 staff members. At Watsonville High, we provide support to over 200 students daily and I oversee 24 staff members there. This means I'm splitting myself between three comprehensive high schools and two alternative high schools. The majority of my Saturday mornings are dedicated to connecting with staff at our Level Up Labs, labs at Aptos High, PV High, and Watsonville High to ensure our programs are running smoothly and have what they need. If they don't, it means I'm leaving my house to get what they need. I choose PVUSD every day. This is a community I've chosen to raise my children. This is a community I've chosen to educate my children. I hope that you choose us too. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board, Board President Holman, Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Georgia Tyrell, and I'm actually going to start by reading a quick blurb from Uli Kumaro, who is a retired PVUSD employee who spent 16 years as a principal. She says, it saddens me to hear that administrators might not be considered for a pay raise that all other employees have received over the past year. It feels as if the position as site principal is not valued. In my job, I was called to be the custodian, the nurse, the counselor, the office attendant, the substitute teacher, the disciplinarian, peacekeeper of students and adults, the maintenance worker, the emergency response team leader, and many other jobs. I can't imagine why a person with all those responsibilities might not be entitled to a pay raise. It feels demeaning. It feels unfair. Um, I echo Uli's sentiments, and I also want to say that I uh, also, as a, um, the after school coordinator at Alianza and w the Watsonville Charter School of the Arts, have also done all of those duties in my position as the after school coordinator. In addition to that, I also did the safe space program during COVID. I was on site every single day with students at the height of the pandemic, making sure the most vulnerable students were offered quality instruction, communicating with their teachers, making sure that their families were safe as needed. Recently, with all the flooding, I got called. My site was closed for the day, and so I got called to Ohlone for the after-school program to help evacuate students and reconnect them with their families when the Pajaro Bridge was closing. In addition to that, I also support regular day as needed for both of the sites I work at. For my program, I oversee two sites, over 50 employees, and over 400 students. It might seem like a lot, but we are at capacity for both sites, and I would love to offer more, but the thing is, is even with that many people working for me, my schedule is barely pieced together on a daily basis. And if anybody calls out, I'm the sub. There's nobody else to cover. Um, and like Dr. Rodriguez presented, people don't even need, teachers don't even need to work all five days in after school to make more money than me. I have plenty of employees that make more money than me. Thank you. Good evening, uh, President Holm, Superintendent Rodriguez, trustees. My name is Les Forster, and I can relate to so much of what this group behind me has shared tonight. I am a retired school principal. I did that for 13 years, and I'm here to serve as an ally on behalf of this group behind me in support of their quest to get a pay increase. In the last seven years since I've been retired, I have the honor of coordinating a community program, which allows me the privilege of visiting all 10 school districts in Santa Cruz County. And I want to tell you that I have never once reached out to a school principal in PVUSD who has not said, sure, bring the group. It's a community group designed to share what's going on in education in Santa Cruz County. Every single principal, including several who are seated behind me tonight, have said, yes, come on over. We, we have a lot of great stuff going on here. We're supporting students in ways you wouldn't believe. Please bring the group out. So I do. And to hear so many uh, site principals and program coordinators say that rarely, if ever, does a trustee come to their sites, that is really hard for me to fathom because y'all who have not been doing that, you absolutely do not know what you're missing. There are so many stellar things in place in this district that aren't approached, that don't have a parallel or an equal within the county. You'd be doing yourselves a great favor and edifying yourself to get out and see what's really happening. Call a principal. They would welcome you to share what's going on. 
Um, I also appreciate the vividity uh, and the clarification of the charts. And I'm going to leave by asking trustees to think about something that we do every meeting in public meetings like this. We're asked to stand and pledge the allegiance to our flag. And I'm going to leave you by asking you to consider the last four words of that so it's not just a rote sequence of something we say. And justice for all. And that starts with you. Our next three speakers are Michael Russo, Gina Elizalde, and Heidi Jacobson. Good evening, Board President Holm, trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Mike Russo. I'm the Director of Science. I started my career teaching seven years in Watsonville High School in the 90s. I had an amazing experience, so much so that I went overseas. I taught biology in Ecuador to Ecuadorian students to learn Spanish, go to Galapagos, the rainforest, all those things I wanted. I taught about and I wanted to learn more about. I worked for 15 years for the New Teacher Center and then returned to Pajaro four years ago in this role. I am honored and privileged because I still feel like a teacher at heart to be working with dedicated teachers, site and district leadership, coaches, classified management and staff. And it's this partnership that is so powerful and required to meet the needs of our students and our families in this district. Curricular science adoptions has been the focus of my work as along with many of my colleagues sitting here tonight. And the adoption process, I feel, highlights the importance of this partnership. Some of the steps involved in that process are communicating with multiple publishers, distributing curriculum materials, communicating with teachers and site admins to assemble a pilot team, creating PD to screen and or pilot curriculum, coordinate publisher training for pilot teams, lead protocols for analysis of data and consensus building, observe use of pilot materials in classrooms, submit board presentations for teacher recommendations, obtain publisher quotes and process purchase orders, order ensure timely delivery of adopted materials, work with IT department to ensure digital access and rostering for teachers, provide publisher PD for all staff, and provide ongoing support and coaching. As you can imagine, that involves everybody in this room and beyond. Oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> If the most important thing I can do tonight is to really thank all of my colleagues. Thank they're you. inspiring, they're supportive. We have such a collaborative culture. My favorite that quote two, is if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go together. Thank you. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go together. Thank you, Michael. If you want to go far, go together. <laughs> thank you. We want to go far. Good evening, President, or, uh, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and trustees. I'm Jean Ellis Alde. I'm the principal of Ohlone Elementary School. Dr. Rodriguez prepared some very informative slides comparing teaching and administrative salaries. I thought I'd spend my two minutes giving a real-world example and putting a face and some experience to those numbers. I started teaching in 1996. Had I stayed in the classroom, I would be on the step for 26 to 29 years of experience and would make $485 a day. I'm an elementary principal on step four of the salary schedule. I make $506 a day. That's a difference of only $21 a day. I prepared these remarks last night. I heard this afternoon that PBUSD has settled with PVFT for a 10% raise. It's now costing me $27 a day to be a principal. I'm not going to say that teaching is easy, because it's not. It's hard work, it's important work, but I work far longer hours and have much more responsibility now as a principal than I did in the classroom, as my colleagues have so accurately described. But what's the reward for that? What is the incentive for solid, experienced teachers to go into administration? Let's say I wanted to promote. 
to stay in PBUSD, the next step up from being a principal is to go to the district office and become a, a director. I would have to take a pay cut to do that. Is this really how we want to run our district? Discouraging good people from taking on more responsibility and leadership positions? Or by pushing people out that need or want a higher salary? We can do better. Our students deserve better. Thank you. Good evening, board and Dr. Rodriguez and President Holm. I'm Heidi Jacobson. I'm the assistant or the academic coordinator at Ohlone, assistant to Ms. Ella Salde, who just spoke to you. I'm here tonight to let you know that at PVUSD, we promise to lift up our students, families, and communities. There are countless things that our teachers, classified staff, and upper district management do to support this group lift. What I would like to do is to make clear tonight to the board Principals, assistant principals, and academic coordinators are the specific staff who make or break that promise in person every day at sites. It is our eyes that students and parents look into when they ask for help. It is our ears that hear their stories of struggle and pain as they try to navigate the rough waters of hope for their children. We make the choice in the moment to go the extra mile to support our families, regardless of what other tasks need to be completed. The immediate attention to their needs always takes priority over anything else, even our own needs. Within the course of a day, we may be wiping a nose, covering a class, mediating a conflict, meeting with an important community member, calming a child who is crying, making sure a student gets enough to eat, counseling a parent on the home behavior tactics, chasing a child who has tried to flee, searching for a pair of shoes for a student has arrived without any, conducting an emergency drill or responding to an actual emergency. We are ready to provide knowledge, advice, resources, and comfort to people of any age and all backgrounds at a moment's notice. We do not give up when it's hard because we know that we are a lifeline of hope in our communities. Now, more than ever, during this time of flooding in Pajaro, with the majority of my students impacted by that flood, uh, we have been called upon to solve problems that are overwhelming and heartbreaking. We have had children who have had to sleep in their cars, families who no, no longer have a source of income or a home, a shortage of basic necessities such as food, water, and clothing, and all of their eyes are looking at us for hope and support every day. We are all things to all people who step foot on our campus, and we must do all of this Thank with the you. composure, knowledge, and ethics befitting a senior manager of a public government agency. I know my time is that, up, but I have a lot more to say, as you can imagine. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Our next three speakers are Mary Gockel, Doug Keegan, Juanita Aguilera. Good evening, President Holm, trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. And I cannot be feel respectful unless I say good evening to all of you and tell you thank you for all the thousands of hours and all your love and energy. I was an administrator. I was an educator for over 25 years in Pajaro, teaching kindergarten through 12th grade, um, administrating for elementary, for secondary. Um, and growing up in a house where my mom was a teacher and she told me that the secretary and the custodian ran the school, my father was a superintendent. And Dr. Rodriguez, unlike you, after living with that, I thought, I can never do that job. <laughs> I, I, could, I just saw what it did to my dad. But when I became an administrator in Pajaro, it was a time when we were almost one day away from takeover from the county office because we, our financial situation was in jeopardy. I didn't feel badly. I was part of a team. I was part of certificated, part of classified, part of administrative. I felt safe. If we want to talk about equity and we want to talk about being a member of an organization when any one sector is not treated equitably, no one is safe. I want to ask you to do the right thing. I want to ask you as the board to make a decision. Why, why is it going to impact me? Why? Do I have my children here right now? No. But I have a daughter that's teaching here and has been in the school all year without a principal. 
a couple of the staff members have asked her, why doesn't she consider being a principal? What do I tell her after March 8th? She'll be respected. She'll have a pathway to the future. I can't do that. I work. I have a partnership with your Korean technical educator, uh, education um, coordinator, Julie Edwards. She's amazing. Mel Pitas would love to have her be the principal at Inno Innovation High School for at least $40,000 more. You. Thank you. Good evening, uh, President Holm, uh, trustees, Superintendent Rodriguez, and Cabinet. I'm Doug Keegan. I am the parent of three graduates of PBUSD. I'm also a former trustee for eight years. I want to thank you all for your service. Um, and But uh, tonight, the testimony that we've heard has been eloquent and inspirational, but at times emotional. And I think there are a lot of people who feel hurt by the actions of the board. And you know now, I think, I'm sure, what the message is, that just as you value your certificated staff, you value your classified staff, you should also value your administrators and continue to value them so that in the future, administrators as well as the other employee groups feel that their job and their efforts are, are worth it and respected. Thank you. Good evening, President Holmes, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, and Cabinet. Uh, my name is Juanita Aguilera, and I am a product of PVUSD and Migrant Education. I have service, I have served PVUSD students for 35 years full time. I have been an instructional aide, a teacher. I have been a um, migrant education support teacher, known as an academic counselor, migrant counselor, English learner specialist, uh, coordinator for the Cabrillo. Uh, migrant Summer Program, and currently proud pr uh, assistant principal of PV High School. So um, I'm giving you this paper in case I'm out of time. I want you to see every point. So on the left, you see a table of what my income would have been if I had stayed as an ELS, um, as a salary scale for a teacher. On the right, you see what I got myself into and what it means <laughs> at the end of every year. My first year as an assistant principal, the salary difference, not a raise, salary difference was under 2,500. My second year, a little over 5,000. My third year, under 8,000. This year, 10,000. I could make that just by working summer school as a teacher. What I lost, I lost longevity after seven years. I lost an opportunity to earn supplemental pay. And I lost union representation. No one is out there fighting for our salaries right now, right? Um, so let me tell you what I added. I added 32 work days to my calendar, totaling at my previous uh, per diem over 15,000. I have um, also added extended work hours. If I am coordinating LPAC testing, and soon I will be coordinating AP testing, um, I'm going to be working a minimum of 11 hours a day at a high school level. Uh, substitute teaching almost for a whole semester, Thank evening, you. evening um, supervision, games, meetings, everything. Okay, so please, please, please Thank understand you. our situation. Don't blame me for stepping down, and that's what I decide to do. Our next three speakers are Consuelo Mason, Nicole Salas Cunha, and Andrew Donnelly Crocker. Hi, good evening, President Holmes, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. 
I am Consuelo Mason, the proud principal of Pajaro Valley High School and a loyal employee for 27 years. I am here tonight to share with you a day in the life of a principal, and just like you heard many of my colleagues say, we start before we even eat our breakfast at home, checking our email, hoping that we don't have our average eight absences a day in the high school, that I will come directly by 7.30, open the doors to our parents, and already have a parent and a student waiting to speak to us. From 7.30 to 8, we're scrambling, looking for coverage, making sure the teachers that are on the sub rotation are available. If they're not available, who becomes the teacher for the day? This lady here. With smiling faces, I go, I open the door. We have a classroom full of advisory students, sometimes three to five advisories with the principal. I get to greet them, take attendance. The bell rings, it's 8.25. 8.25, we're ready to do it all over again for the first block finding the coverage, going to classes. Maybe I'm a math teacher, maybe I'm an ELD teacher. I don't know, but it's gonna be a fun day because I'm gonna be in front of students and so is my team. Then the next bell rings and I'm ready to go out to supervision, have my coffee's been warmed up three times, maybe four and maybe not even touched since this morning. I go in and then it's time to make sure there's coverage for the next block and also um, break in lunch supervision, making sure I'm there restroom supervision, campus supervisor, counselor, because there's another student who doesn't want to go to the other class after lunch. They're ready to talk about what's going on and that they need some to hear from me what they should do. And of course, my priority is classroom first, but let's go see what I can do for you. Um, I'm getting ready for the day, lunch ends, then we do the third block all over again, coverage, maybe subbing, going back and hopefully reading my emails. So when I the bell rings for traffic supervision, end of the day, we start all over again and get ready for our next uh, meetings, school site council, ELAC, et cetera. And that's our day at a high school Thank every you. day. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. I'm Nicole Salas Cunha, I'm Program Director for Special Ed Programs in Elementary and Our Speech. I'm speaking today on many perspectives I personally hold. The issue at hand is not simply about the dollar amount on our salary schedule, it's also about the actions my community board representatives take to show I'm a valued member here. Just like when I decide, decide to become a teacher, deciding to become an administrator in education is not about the pay either. For me, the difference in pay from teacher to administration is not a daily rate increase, it's just 36 more days on my contract that come with longer hours, weekends, added pressure, and responsibilities of leadership. In my 20 years plus in education, I've been an IA, a preschool teacher, a substitute, substitute teacher, a special ed teacher, a PBIS lead, a PBFT union rep, a TOSA instructional coach, a new teacher project mentor, an instructional instructor for a satellite teaching credential program at our county office of ed, a principal, which is now still vacant because I became a program director um, at special ed department. Um, and this, this position requires my expertise and knowledge of how to develop programs and create access for diverse learners across my 37 programs at 19 sites and our speech services across the district. These programs call on me for the most challenging and unique needs of our students. Um, while doing these duties, I also have been a substitute IA and BT, a substitute teacher, a substitute principal, a substitute yard duty, a substitute custodian, sometimes not a substitute, but just additional support in crisis situations. All of us know we can earn more in another line of work, but we can also earn more in another district to stay in this important line of work. What I cannot do at this moment is make that pay and serve my home community. I live on Buena Vista Drive, and when I pull out of my driveway in the morning, I see buses of students and community workers starting their day and feel honored to be trusted and educate their children, as I trust PBUSD with my own children. But when the Board of <coughs> Representatives award salary increases to all their positions last year and then excludes me. I don't feel valued member here. I don't feel like a valued member here. I feel like all the work is devalued and perhaps the districts recruiting me value more, me more than my home community. Thank you. Uh, good evening, board members. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez. Uh, my name is Andrew Donnelly Crocker, and I am the proud principal of Bradley Elementary School. In Dr. Rodriguez's presentation, she, meant it, she mentioned uh, promoting from within. I, like many of the people behind me, um, have been one of those people who have promoted from within. I began my career in PVOSD in 2005 as a kindergarten teacher at Ansoldo. 
11 years later, I made the jump to being the AC at Minty White. And then in the middle of the pandemic, I made the challenging uh, transition to the principal of Bradley Elementary. I am a relatively new principal. Um, I was given the keys to Bradley during arguably one of the most challenging times to ever face educators. Uh, I think every teacher and every person in education can agree that the last three years have been some of the most challenging of our careers. I felt lucky to have uh, gotten and continue to get the support from many of the more veteran principals, administrators, and district leaderships during these challenging times. Um, I'm not sure where I'd be without their support. Um, the stresses and the hurdles that we have all faced have seemed impossible, and yet I keep showing back up to work every day, and I keep working to show the resolve uh, to support our, my community. Um, I'm not going to lie, like, I've hit my breaking point many times, but I keep coming back. And yet, I don't regret taking on the challenges of being a leader in today's educational landscape. Our students and our community need strong leadership now more than ever, and I am proud to be part of a group of people that are committed to working long hours and enduring countless stresses to, to provide our students and community with the support they need to thrive socially, emotionally, and academically. It's for this reason I've come to voice my concern in front of the board. For the first time in my career, I am concerned that I might not be, I'm sorry, I'm concerned that it might not be in my best interest to continue my, ed, my leadership journey in PBOSD much longer. Thank you. There's lots of us thinking that right now. So I urge you to make a good choice. Our next three speakers are Brian Saxton, Josh Phillips, and Chrissy McLean. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and board members. My name is Brian Saxton. I'm the director of HR for certificated staff. Uh, and I've had to rewrite this thing like six times because everyone keeps saying all the stuff I thought I was going to say. Um, but first of all, I just want to let you know I love being an administrator. Um, it, uh, it's just an enjoyable part of my career. I've been 28 years in education. I started in PBOSD about 20 years ago as the principal or the vice principal of Aptos Jr. Moved on to be the principal of Aptos Jr., then the principal of Bradley and then into a district office role as a certificated uh, director. At each stop, I've been privileged to work with an amazing group of administrators who sit behind me and have firsthand experience of the hard work and dedication that each of them brings to their positions. As Aaron's daughter mentioned, at any given time, you will see administrators working on that infamous line, other duties as needed. Every day we take on a new role. Over and over the past few years, we've taken on roles that we would have never expected. Not once in my life did I think I would be a CLIA certified COVID tester. <laughs> or a trainer, or a vaccine scheduler, or a quarantine tracker, a classroom mover, a virtual learning expert, flood and damage control, school mover, an Alice trainer, shout out to Ruth, right? <laughs> or any of those things. All of us take on those challenges as you've heard each day. When you move from the classroom or another position into administration, you are saying, I am ready for more. All of the administrators you see here tonight have given more, more than many of them ever thought they were capable of. And they have kept this district moving forward in the best and the worst of conditions. I encourage you to honor that commitment to PVUSD and its community by giving them more more of your trust and recognition. You can show that to us by approving the 4.5 raise and any upcoming raises that we have all earned Thank and you. deserve. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez and trustees. I would like to begin with a question. Which of the following necessities have increased in cost in the last five years? Is it A, housing, B, childcare, C, transportation, or D, all of the above? If you guess D, all of the above, you are correct. Year in and year out, cost of living has increased, and most job classifications in PVUSD have seen raises to their salary schedules, and rightfully so. 
I don't want to create any sort of division between job classifications. Everyone is working very hard, and we stand together with PVFT and CSEA in our collective effort to receive fair compensation. As you will note in the data that presented by Dr. Rodriguez, not since 2018 and 19 has PVUSD management received an increase to our salary schedule. Since the onset of the pandemic, I have seen my child care costs for my daughter increase 40%. In the years since the last raise that PVUSD admin received, the cost of a gallon of milk has increased 50%. The cost of gasoline has almost doubled. And the cost of housing in Santa Cruz County for rentals has increased as much as 60%. Home purchases as much as 80%. In an analysis done by MIT, a single parent with two children would need to make $137,000 to afford to live in our county. A family with two working adults and three children would need to bring home over $180,000. The gap between wages and housing costs in our region are so stark that many employees must live further and further away in order to afford housing for their families, causing a likely disconnect between them and their school communities and forcing a likely search for work closer to home. When I type the letter E in my search bar, edjoin.org is automatically preloaded for me, and I can't help but notice that nearly every listing for an administrative position in the tri-counties and bay areas advertise much higher salaries than we see here. And many of these listings tout increases to their salary schedules for 23-24 by as much as 15%. These offers are going to look more and more attractive the longer the board waits to approve a fair compensation package for site and district administrators. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Chrissy McLean. I'm the coordinator of academic and social emotional counseling programs for PVUSD. I wrote out some things quite a few times and crumpled them up and erased them and all of those kind of things. And as I've been listening tonight, I really can't help but continue to think about all of sort of the heartbreak that my colleagues are feeling. And I in that meeting when um, the raises were not approved, I just remember how my heart sank, and really my heart sank for the community and for all of our students. And I thought, well, who is gonna wanna come work for us? Who's gonna, whoever was thinking about becoming an administrator in PVUSD, who's now gonna say, oh yeah, that sounds like a good idea? And then I, I thought, how many people are gonna leave? I already know how many people left last year. And I too, I, I, I came from the classroom here in PVUSD. I was a proud wildcat, once a wildcat, always a wildcat, as a teacher and an assistant principal. And I, I, I see so many people coming up from different positions and such a sense of family in this district and all of us out there supporting all the sites and each other and I'm, I'm too heartbreak, heartbroken. The day after you made that announcement, I was at a couple sites meeting with a couple principals and tears. I didn't expect to, to see that. But the principals were, were crying because they were hurt. And so like, you know, all of us for each other, you know, I was there and I supported them and, and gave them my love. And we don't need you to love us, but we do need you to support us. Now and when the next 10% the, the next comes, we need tremendous. you to Thank support you. us because that supports Watsonville and all of the PV, of PVUSD. Thank you. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Myra Cervillo, Sandy Solis, and Julie Edwards. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Mayra Calvillo. I have been a PVUSD classified staff member for seven years, and I'm also a parent and an alumni. I'm here to support PVUSD administrators in getting a raise. My experience as of late in PVUSD has had an enormous impact on me as a staff member, as well as a parent. I have learned so much from my direct administrator, Julie Edwards, CTE coordinator. 
I understand that the work that I do drives equity in our schools. One of my main roles is to work closely with her to purchase necessary equipment and classroom supplies to launch new career technical pathways for students, which in turn creates new opportunities for them. I'm able to see firsthand how many hours of collaboration with other district administrators here are put into every pathway that is launched at PBSD, all in the best interests of our students. I see the early mornings, late evenings, and weekend hours that are put in. I'm fortunate to be a parent of a student that attends a PBUSD school, and I get to see firsthand the commitment the administrators have for our students and all of the behind the scenes efforts that it takes to come together to help out our students and our community in times of need. Most recently from COVID testing, food relief, shelter relief, and well-being in general, which are all other duties on top of their work. Administrators have not had a raise in years. However, inflation has gone up since then. Meanwhile, their pay remains the same. Everyone else is getting some sort of a raise to compensate, and administrators should get one too. I can imagine a negative impact this could have on PVUSD's ability to attract and retain qualified admin to serve our deserving students. As a parent, I care about retaining our dedicated and committed visionary administrators in the jobs that they love. Administrators that can work and live in Santa Cruz County and that can relate to our students. Thank you for your time and consideration. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Sandy Solis Maldonado. I'm a parent and staff member of PVUSD. Uh, in my current role as a CTE counselor and previously academic counselor at Watsonville High School, I have worked under their leadership of exceptional administrators. To mention a few, Julie Edwards, Dr. Ivan Alcaraz, Consuelo Mason, Christina McLean, Peggy Pugh, Benjamin Slider, Elaine Lagreta, Joseph Gregorio, amongst others that have gone above and beyond their duties and have always perform, performed for the best interest of student success. I can truly say that without the guidance of these administrators, our jobs as counselors wouldn't be possible. I came into the CTE program in 2019, the same year that Julie Edwards, my current administrator, was brought on board as the new CTE coordinator. At the time, CTE was a program that was not aligned to our district's vision and values with limited student access, misalignment to newly implemented A through G graduation requirements, and lack of recognition to the program. Our program has grown tremendously in every aspect, including student enrollment in CTE pathways, dual enrollment pathways, CTE completers, and now all CTE courses are A through G and 15 are honors and articulated courses. All this has been possible because of the diligent work and dedication of my administrator. I have seen firsthand how many extra hours admin works, including weekends and nights, making themselves available anytime, any day that we need to reach them. As a parent of a preschool student in PVUSD, I feel confident that the school that awaits my child every day will be filled with the same people that I trust in at my job. School administrators are essential to the success of our schools. They deserve a race that recognizes their hard work and, dedica and dedication. Please, I urge the board to approve a race for school administrators. Thank you for your time and consideration. Good evening, President Holm, trustees and superintendent, Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Julie Edwards, PVUSD, coordinator of career technical education. After working in the tech industry for many years, I transitioned to education. And in 20 years, I've been a teacher, a classified staff member, a counselor, and obtained a degree to become an educational leader. This is my eighth year in PVUSD, the best place in my entire working career where I have ever worked. I have lived and worked in Santa Cruz County for 30 years, and I alone support myself financially. First, I was an assistant principal at Aptos High, and in 2019, PVUSD acquired CTE from the County Office of Education, and I was motivated to, explore, to ex apply my experience as a coordinator. We inherited a program that suffered from not being aligned to the vision of the district with students at the center. Over four years, we've accomplished much to be proud of some of what Sandy mentioned. Our program has 24 pathways, 63 um, A through G courses, 15 honors, transferable college credit. We have 50 incredible educators serving 3,200 students. 61% of our high school students are in a CTE pathway. 
During this time, Andrea Carlos Willie and I have raised um, and secured more than $6 million in grant money to fuel the transformation of our CTE program. All of this was accomplished during the impactful events of the last recent years, and representative also of my colleagues in 21-22 alone, I spent three months of alternate assignments at schools as a COVID tester, subbing for administrators and teachers, and more. Meanwhile, work in progress to drive transformation in the CTE program continued without delay. This included countless hours during evenings, late nights, and weekends. Thank you. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Angelica Ortigosa, Patric Patricia Unruh, and Judy St Stable. Buenas tardes, Presidenta, Doctora Rodríguez, Mesa Directiva. Good evening, y President. Mi nombre es Angélica Ortigosa y formo parte de, del Consejo de Padres Migrantes y estoy ante ustedes para solicitarle de una manera atenta el incremento del 4.5% para los administrativos. He estado involucrada en algunos este, proyectos. Sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. I could not hear her in yeah. there, so that's why I had to come out. Oh. Perdone, no podía escucharle allá. Oh. Sí, por favor. Buenas tardes. Good, after, good evening. Presidenta, doctora Rodríguez, mesa directiva. Uh, President, Dr. Rodríguez, and uh, board of trustees y auditorio en general. And um, board. And the audience. Mi nombre es Angélica Ortigosa y formo parte del Consejo de Padres Migrantes. My name is Angélica Ortigosa and I'm part of the migrant uh, parents. Y estoy ante ustedes para solicitarle de una manera atenta el incremento del 4.0% para los administrativos. I am um, here to uh, support the raise of 4.5% for administration. Ya que ellos son una pieza fundamental en el proceso de educación de nuestros estudiantes. Um, as they are a fundamental key um, piece uh, in education for our students. Y pienso que son acreedores de este incremento por su loable labor que ellos realizan. And I believe they deserve this raise um, because of what they do. Gracias por escuchar mi petición, esperando una respuesta positiva a la misma. Thanks for um, listening to my petition, hoping for a positive response. Good evening, everyone. My name is Trish Enrue. I come from a long line of educators. My grandmother, my father, my mother, my older brother. And there was one thing I knew when I grew up. I didn't want to be a teacher. <laughs> but life goes in a different direction than you expect. And it's a job that I love and I've been passionate about and um, have spent more than 20 years. Currently, I am the migrant um, um after school coordinator. I coordinate our after school and Saturday and summer programs for the K through eight students across the whole district. Um, these programs ensure that our migrant students are able to excel academically. I do the work behind the scenes so that our teachers can focus on the teaching and focus on the students. Currently, I'm working more days and now making less money than when I was a teacher. Um, teachers with more years of experience, they have no incentives to become administrators because they are going to make less per diem in their administration jobs. Um, I encourage the district to rethink their policy of having people start on step one. We lost five out of six of the middle school principals last year. Our students and teachers suffer when we don't provide them with consistent leadership. Our migrant students have 
a lot of unpredictable moves and schedules and other things that are out of their control. Schools may be one of the few places in their lives that provide consistency. This consistency comes from having strong leaders that return year after year. So I urge all of you, pass the salary raise for our teachers, for our classified, and for our administration. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Judy Stibiel. Um, thank you for convening and being here. Um, I come to you as a community partner. I work with Pajaro Valley Arts, and I'm also part of Arts Now Pajaro Valley, part of Create California, which is for arts education advocacy. I've been working as a volunteer partner um, with PVUSD for about 12 years now, and what I do know is that Community partnerships require nurturing and care and consistency. And I've seen that through all the partnerships that PVUSD has created through their administrative staff, their teachers. It's an incredible experience and it's all for one thing. It's for the students and for the betterment of our community. And I know that I couldn't do my job without PVSD, and there are things that we as community partners add to PVSD that the students wouldn't have otherwise. This nurturing and caring happens beyond everything that we've heard tonight. I mean, all these things that everyone's doing, this is above and beyond, and it's, again, for the students. As an artist, I'm an observer. Um, and it doesn't take a real keen eye to see that what has happened is a huge morale issue if this isn't passed. And I know that we're all here, you, everyone is here because we care about the kids. I don't understand, I don't know how you will be able to see your visions through, your mandates through, and your goals through, if you lose these fabulous people behind me. Thank you. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Susan Grelty, Dr. John Grelty, and Todd Westfall. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. Um, first, I'm going to speak to you. Many of you know I was the former arts coordinator for PVUSD, and I did that job for six years and actually partnered with Judy quite a bit. Um, that Building the arts program that was built in PVUSD didn't happen sitting behind a desk from 8 to 4. It happened with a lot of nights, weekends, and time that nobody saw beyond it, building community partnerships, with not just PVA, El Sistema, all, all of these community organizations come into play. That doesn't happen sitting behind a desk. So um, it was, I love that job, I'm still passionate about the arts, but you know, when, it, when the reality hits that you're making less than, you're, than the people that are working teaching every day and you're burnt out and you're tired, you know, that it, it's really hard it's, it's, a, it's a tough nut to deal with every day and knowing that you're doing it for the kids. So I transitioned and I started working with the most promising children you could ever think of at new school. And every day I go in and every day there's new hope. And that hope I see, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop at four o'clock. It doesn't stop at three o'clock. It doesn't stop at two o'clock in the morning when they're texting me, hey, Miss G, I can't take it. I'm, this is what's happening. I need, I need somebody to come pick me up. I'm stuck here. Can you help me? These things happen around the clock. It doesn't stop. It, it starts, like everybody else has said, before you get out of bed in the morning and doesn't stop until you go to, I don't know when it stops. Hopefully never, because I hope to never lose a student again. So with that said, we need people who are willing to do that work. And I have for you guys, um, every week we get these nice little Ed News 
and it offers jobs in here. So I want you guys to look at these because yeah. we'll show you how much other districts are paying for the jobs that we're doing. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, who I think is the hardest working leader and educational leader I've ever had the pleasure of working with. I, I thank you for this opportunity to address you this evening. My name is John Gralty, no relation to Susan whatsoever. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm a recent past Pajaro Valley Education Foundation board member and serve as Dean of Visual Applied and Performing Arts at Cabrillo College. My wife Susan has served Pajaro Valley Unified School District as a teacher at New School, the VAPA and Gate Coordinator, and now as principal of New School. Despite obvious self-interest, <laughs> I address the board tonight in the interest of Pajaro Valley Unified School District students, whose success is the direct result of dedicated faculty, staff, and administrators the ability of the district to attract and retain qualified professionals capable of providing world-class education to students is directly related to the support the district commits to such individuals in the form of competitive benefits and salary. In Dr. Rodriguez's opening presentation, she shared the importance of attractive and competitive salaries in attracting math and science teachers and retaining nurses, for example, and showed that PVUSD, by many comparisons, is not competitive when it comes to administrator salaries. I am personally aware of highly qualified PVUSD administrators who have left the district in search of higher salaries. It is therefore in the district interest of student success that total compensation for those in charge of delivering quality education remains at the highest possible competitive level. Without the benefit of a bargaining unit that ensures an ongoing review of salary and benefits, PVUSD administrators have not seen an ongoing salary increase since 2018. Thank you. I urge you to provide this increase to administrators. All right, good evening, President Holm, uh, Dr. Rodriguez, board members. Um, my name is Todd Westfall, President, uh, Principal, Calabasas Elementary. Um, and I just want to share a quick story. A few years ago, um, I had a wonderful teacher, uh, 20 plus years experience as a teacher, as a new, pro new teacher project coach, uh, a trainer of trainers in various uh, dibbles and everything you could imagine. And, he and I hired him as a teacher, and I recruited him to become my AC. And uh, he was my AC last year, and he was wonderful. Uh, we saw a ton of growth at the school. Um, and despite having to substitute or teach in classes uh, almost daily, um, I know he was doing some of the toughest mild to mo or moderate to severe SDC classes. I think he subbed 25 days in that class last year, staying late, helping families, doing everything. Uh, it truly brought us both joy to see our students in our school grow. And it broke his heart when he came to me and he said, um, I know I made a commitment, but for my family, I found out that as a teacher, I'm going to make $4,000 more a year and work 21 days less. So that's 21 days with my kids and families. And I'm not talking about, you know, our daily wage. I'm talking salary. 4000 a year as a bilingual teacher to make more than being uh, somebody with much more responsibility and much more hours. Um, and I lost them. Uh, fortunately, we flew it. I was able to, I had a great applicant who was taking a pay cut to come be an AC again, but he joined me and he's doing a wonderful job. Um, I've been in this district a long time. I attended Calabasas as a kid, taught there many years, uh, moved up the ranks. I have a passion for our community, a passion for our school. Um, and I want to say I can't afford to lose another AC, but I can afford to lose another AC. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, the kids cannot afford to lose another AC. The kids cannot afford it. Thank you. Thank you.
Our next three speakers are Saulo Torado, Sergio Ambriz, and Herlindo Fernandez. Good night, everybody. Dr. Holmes, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. I wasn't prepared to speak tonight, but I just want to tell you all the hard work that we all do out here. On the last storm, my fellow workers and me were up at 3 in the morning making sure that all the schools in the district had power and had water for the kids to go to school that day. So we do that without getting paid. We do it because we love what we do and we do it all for the kids. Thank you. Good evening, President Holmes, Dr. Rodriguez, board members, cabinet. My name is Arredo Fernandez, and I'm the director of maintenance and operations. Tell you a little bit about myself. I've been working here for the school district since 89. I started as a student helper, worked my way up the ranks. I've been a CSA member for those 20 something years. When I moved up to a supervisor position, you know, I took it two years ago, supervisor. When I became in the role, my phone and emails don't stop ringing. We gotta respond to emails and phones 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Most of the time we're up in the middle of the night responding to emergencies that occur so we could get the schools up and ready for the next day. That's some, some of the things that we do that people don't see. We gotta you know, communicate with contractors, PG&E, you know, you name it. An emergency pops up, we gotta be there to, to assess the situation and see what we can do to get the schools up and ready for the morning. Now that I'm a uh, management, classified management, I feel like, you know, working here for those 30 years as a CSA member, my job was valued. And now that I'm a classified member or classified management, it feels like it's not good enough but it was good enough to be a CSA member. So I encourage you, we all, management here and classified, we all deserve a raise. I encourage you to please assess that and give us a raise. Thank you. Hello, President um, Holmes and Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees and Cabinet. Since uh, seven years ago, I got hired by a uh, trustee that's right now here, He's Oscar Soto. He made the right decision. I remember my first day I told him, you're not going to regret hiring me. And up to this day, I'm still here um, for the kids. Um, like Hurley said, uh, we work, for example, in the floods. With everything that happened with Pajaro Middle, we worked 32 hours to get all the kids from Pajaro at Lakeview and not just get them to Lakeview, but feel comfortable and be happy at Lakeview and make it their own home as well. Um, I consider everybody behind me, not just my coworkers, but family, because I spend more time with them than with my actual family. Uh, like a lot of people know, uh, in the evacuations of Pajaro the first time, I was, I was never able to go back because I was working and I was serving Pajaro, uh, the Pajaro district and all the kids. This other flood, my house was impacted, and the same thing happened. I was not able to go back, and I feel proud of what I do, and I just hope that you guys take everything in consideration of pretty much everything we do and everything we do every day and all those hard hours, because now it's just us, but our families at home too. Our next three speakers are Dan Weiser, Luis Medina, and Esmeralda Flores.
Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Dan Weiser, and I'm the Director of Technology Services and the proud husband of a PVFT member. Um, and um, I love my job. Um, I feel very fortunate that I get to work in PVSD, and I get to do a job that I love very much. Um, and I was going to talk a lot about tech services and the tech team and the admin team um, and their skills and how much they could get paid over the hill and all that kind of stuff. But um, actually, um, after listening to all of, all of this, I, I decided I wanted to tell a different story tonight. Um, so when COVID first hit and we didn't really understand exactly the dangers or how it was transmitted um, and the shelter in place order went out, and Dr. Rodriguez brought me into her office and said, okay, we're going to have to go into this distance learning thing. And we didn't really even understand exactly what that was yet. Um, she said, we have, what, 15,000 devices? We'll just pass out to kids by Thursday. <laughs> and said, can we do it, Dan? And, and my first response was, absolutely not. There's no way. That's not possible. It could not be done in any way that I could possibly imagine. Um, but then I remembered that I have all of you. And this group of people, um, we, we were told. But first, I was like, OK, maybe we could do it. And then she said, well, there's a couple other things to it. They all need to be disinfected. <laughs> 15,000 devices disinfected by Thursday and somehow given to children that you know, are in their homes. Um, and I said, no, yes, yes, of course we can. <laughs> and, and then she said, but no classified or, or certificate staff can do that work. Dan, I'm sorry, that was two all minutes. Right. And it was management that all stepped forward and disinfected and deployed all those devices and kept this district running. Thank you. Ready? Good afternoon, President Holmes, Dr. Rodriguez, and members of the board. My name is Luis Medina. I'm the Director of Migrant Education. I understand that you have a very difficult job, and sometimes you must make difficult decisions. But us getting 4.5 salary increase should not be one of them. This cannot be and must not be us against you or against anybody. We're all in the same team. We all want the same team. We want the, what's best for students. As administrator, we have managed we, we have to manage and be leaders at our school sites and run effective educational programs. As migrant director, we make sure that 1,500 students get educational service through a direct services in the classroom, during after school programs, Saturday academies, winter and summer school. Since my arrival in, uh, to the migrant education program, we have managed to add speech and debate, boys and girls in engineering, robotics, Saturday academies, expanded, uh, expanded our after school program and added leadership summer school programs for our high school students. We must also manage our budget and try to stay within our means. However, we're also asked to assist other school sites by subbing in the classroom or assist with administration duties. I personally have been a site administrator this year at Watson High School, EA Hall, Aptos Junior, Rolling Hills Middle School, Pajaro Middle School, Lakeview. I'm sure all of the other directors have done the same or maybe more. We do this because we are committed to our school to our students, families, and in the district. Also, managers that does not have a voice, we do not have a union. We cannot negotiate. We depend, and we hope there will be equity in all levels in terms of salary increments. Middle management is the only group of employees within the district that does that not have a longevity compensation. Administrators cannot perform any pay supplement to work. This includes working Saturdays. Administration do not have a minimum amount of work hours. Work is complete when the job is complete, such as night meet parent meetings, sports supervision, student events, mandatory district meetings, and field trip supervision. All of this regardless of the number yeah. of hours these events take, even if it happens on a weekend. Thank you.
Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez, President Holmes and Trustees. My name is Esmeralda Flores and I'm the Academic Corner at Radcliffe. I am homegrown through PVSD from Calabasas, Rolling Hills, first class of PVHS, and my first job was a student helper at PV in the after school program. I was a teacher on my site for 10 years before becoming the academic coordinator. When I was a teacher, I saw how hard my administrators worked for the staff, students, and families. Little did I know how much they actually did until now that I'm in their shoes and it's now my responsibility. My job duties and responsibilities as administrator are evolving. Let me tell you a few. Curriculum and testing coordinator, counselor, Alice trainer, office personnel, nurse, substitute, custodian, crossing guard, campus and parking lot security, translator, substitute, instructional aid, plus working 10 plus hours, including weekends and being available 24 seven and pretty much anything else you can think of. Did you know that? Because I didn't when I applied for the job. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if I should go back to the classroom where I will make more money with less responsibilities and stress. I could have gone to another district, but I decided to stay here where I was born and raised, with my community, my people, where I could have an impact and be a role model for the students here because I was them at one point. This is still my community. It's heartbreaking to see my once teachers and counselors here with me, now colleagues here fighting for what they deserve. Now we stand before you all and ask you to for an appropriate salary and make you believe that administrators deserve a raise, that we work hard, that our jobs matter, and that we matter. So have we convinced you yet? Thank you. Our next three speakers are Lisa Sandoval, Juan Alcantar, and Linda Orozco. Good evening, President Home, Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez and Cabinet. My name is Lisa Sandoval and I've been in Paro Valley Unified School District for 20 years. I am a graduate of PVUSD. All five of my children have attended or are currently attending PVUSD schools. I have sat on school site for 16 years, am active in running the snack bar at Watsonville High School for six years, fed football players for four years, every Friday night, volunteer on other organizations, and then work 50 to 70 hours a week. Last week was 70 hours, including all my days off. On a, on a personal note of my dedication to our schools and our students, my son died in a, car or in a motorcycle accident as a student at Lakeview a few years ago. That very next morning, which was a holiday, I made sure I contacted as many administrators as I could at our school sites so that they would be aware that the children would be coming to school breaking dress code wearing red in support of my son. And they would need support counselors there because that was before we had a strong mental health program. That's my dedication and the time that I took away from my family to make sure every student was going to be helped the next day. The list of my duties and responsibilities have been endless. And besides overseeing Title 22, Title 9, Title 5, Title 1, and Head Start regulations, I oversee 45 family child care homes, four full day classrooms, eight state preschool classrooms, seasonal programs, teen parent program, raising a reader program. I support classrooms, the teachers, I mentor multiple teachers, I support our custodial staff when needed. I even support maintenance and operations as we had to rip out a whole classroom to, that had been rat infested and ran through. I've caught mice, thrown them away. I've made sure that our classrooms are ready whenever needed. The last eight years, I've been, I have Thank not you. made more than I do working in a classroom. But I'm here because of our community and our children. Good evening, President Holmes. Nice to see you again. Um, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, and Ms. Mamoril, who was my student at Lakeview. Hi, Mamoril. Hi. Juan Alcantar, principal at Pajaro Middle School. I was, with, I was with you guys at the last meeting. Um, been in the district for 24 years. Teacher, um, migrant educator, um, assistant principal seven years ago, and this is first year at Pajaro Middle. First of all, I'm very happy that you, there was a tentative agreement with PVPS, PVFT. 
I think our teachers do a lot of work, and I'm happy that you all set up with them. It allows us to keep them. Um, they do a great job, but I believe that we all do a great job. Um, I'm, I don't say I do more than anybody else on my school, but I also don't do less than anybody else. If you look around this district, that has been said, the years of experience, Aptos Junior High School, first year, first year, principal, assistant principal. My school, first year, first year, principal, assistant principal. EA Hall, first year, first year, as, um, principal, assistant principal in our district. Rolling Hills, first year, first year, principal, assistant principal. The only school that has longevity is Cesar Chavez. 10 years, 10 years. I'm long, I've been here long enough, I, I'm gonna mention his name, Alcaraz, when he was up and coming young guy, young buck, you can tell, you can tell he was bright leadership skills and he stuck around. But when Ivan was around, there was other great leaders that were that had the potential. There was there was a Ramiro, a Sofia, a Yesenia, and Osidis, and they're not here. My my concern is with the way our, our pay scale is set, we're gonna lose a lot of young talent. They they shouldn't be martyrs and sacrifice their dreams of owning a home, having a family, because we don't have a structure the way it should be. Any teacher who wants personal growth can't stay here. Right? They want to join our leadership team, but why would they sacrifice it? Why would they sacrifice their families? Like Ben said, I give my life to this district, and that's not fair. I think we're, we're setting our district up for failure because we can't have homegrown. I'm homegrown, but I stuck it out. But thank you very much, and please consider connecting us with every single race everybody else gets. Thank you. Um, good evening, President Holm, trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, cabinet. My name is Linda Orozco. I have been a coordinator in the Child Development Department for 12 years. My job is program compliance, teacher trainer, motivator, program planning, hiring, subbing, cleaning, and putting up temporary fencing um, when it's needed. I also need to stay on top of new regulations, research, best practices, and make sure the information gets back to our staff. I also certify with the California Department of Education to lead verified trainings for staff, not only our staff, but early childhood staff in the county. There's only three certified trainers with the California Department of Ed because nobody can get through it. Um, I'm also a member of the Local Childhood Advisory Council for Santa Cruz County. I also, um, well, I need to certify every year with California Department of Ed. And again, there's not very many um, early childhood leaders in the county, but um, I'm one of them. And there's very few that can get through this rigorous process each year. I work to create homeschool and community connections by holding monthly meetings on various topics for parents, teachers, child care providers, and the community at large. I help to analyze data to help guide program needs and make adjustments with the department team each year so we are meeting the needs of our students, families, and staff. Myself, along with our department admin team, often communicate after hours, which might include very early mornings, late in the evenings, on the weekends, to make sure our sites and departments are functioning optimally. There's never a moment or time where we can say we are done learning or moving forward. There's constant demands that need addressing. We live up to our professional role at every moment. Um, I'm old. I've been an early childhood professional for over 20 years, and never at this age I thought I would need to get a second job to make basic ends meet. Um, so I urge you to please, Thank please you. approve this 4.5%. Thank you so much. Our next three speakers are Claudia Monjares, Terry Redfern, and Emily Helbing. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Claudia Mujeras, and I'm the Director of Language Arts, History, and Ethnic Studies. In my role, I interact and work with teachers and administrators TK through 12. I began my teaching career outside of PBSD and was supported by both the site admin and my grade level team. The synergy of support and trust between the principal and the teachers is what kept me in this profession instead of quitting, as I often thought about doing due to the stress of the job. I've been in education now for 24 years and in PVUSD since 2001. Over the years, I've seen ups and downs in the culture between management and teaching staff in PVUSD. 
When moving into management, I made a promise to myself to always remember what it was like to not feel supported or valued by admin. This, process, this promise drives how I am as a leader and how important it is to contribute to the synergy of our PBUSD system. When I chose to become admin, I stayed focused on how I could be sure to be an authentic, positive, trustworthy, and communicative leader. It is hard work, especially knowing how fragile trust can be. I continue to focus on these traits in my current district leadership role, as I know many of my administrator and district colleagues do as well. I feel the last board meeting discussion and decisions around a pay increase for management was a direct slap in the face to all of our site administrators and district office leaders. It was a clear message to us that we are not valued or seen as important in the, to the PVSD system. It makes me question whether or not this board has a clear understanding of what we do on a daily basis to help sites be there for our students. It also makes me sad for our district that we are perpetuating a divisive culture without even batting an eye. I hope that tonight's discussion is an opportunity for you to work on mending the divide. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Rodriguez, and Cabinet members. I'm Terry Redford. I'm the Director of Mathematics here in the district. I've been an educator for 32 years as a teacher, a coach, assistant principal, principal, and now director. And as a mathematician, I can't help but do a little bit of math. There are over 2,000 years of experience in this room in management right now. And the raise that we talk about, 14.5%, if you include both of them, is still 5% less than inflation in the last five years. So net-net, a decrease. I witness daily as part of the curriculum instruction team the dedication that all of my fellow directors and coordinators do. We've all subbed as classroom teachers or administrators. And part of our job is to create the vision for education. And since we all believe in children, that vision that is here in this district is one of the most pure visions I've ever been a part of. But we don't do this for appreciation. You know, we do this because we care. But why would you risk not appreciating this amazing group of educators? Because without visionary leadership, we won't be able to see our way forward as the education landscape gets more All of the educators, not just classified and certificated teachers, but the administrators and leaders who make this district the great place it is and why I'm proud to be part of it. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm and trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Emily Halbig. I'm a teacher at CCMS which has been mentioned tonight as one of the only middle schools with consistent leadership, so I wanna speak a little bit about that. Um, I'm here to speak in support of our district site administrators. Um, for all the times I've addressed the board, I honestly never thought I'd come up here and say that. Um, but I do think it's important to state that many teachers do support raises for our leaders um, that are in, lines, in line with the ones that we've gotten. So in my 17 year career in PVUSD, I've worked with seven principals and I've collaborated with many of the certificated and classified leaders here tonight. It can't be understated how essential quality administrators are for our schools. Solid and consistent leadership impacts student learning and teacher morale, sets the foundation for a safe, secure, and welcoming environment, and makes new teachers feel supported. Quality administrators make kids want to come to school, and they inspire teachers to continue to grow. I've also seen what happens on the flip side and the harm that can be done to students and the teachers who advocate for them at schools with high administrative turnover. Just as raising teacher salaries attracts the highest quality teaching candidates, so does raising salaries of site leaders. We have to retain our admin and we must also attract new ones, home growing them from our veteran teaching staff, people like me. I know I will make a great administrator and I look forward to doing that someday soon. There are many other future leaders like me who are committed to our kids in our community. The problem is, for a lot of us, an admin job would mean a pay cut. Factoring in today's raise, if I became an assistant principal in one of our middle schools next year, my salary would drop $14,000, and I'd be working an additional 27 contract days. That's a decrease in my daily rate of over $100. 
I'm committed to the kids in this community and I don't want to work anywhere else. I'm not choosing leadership solely for financial gain, but it certainly doesn't make sense for me to leave a position that I enjoy to go to something more challenging for less. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next three speakers are Veronica Aguilar, Nancy Zuniga, and Wendy Baltazar. I want to apologize ahead of time. I'm a little nervous and hope I don't cry, but <sighs> good evening, President Home, Dr. Rodriguez, and trustees. My name is Veronica Aguilar proud principal of the Armadillos, and currently an unpaid eighth grade Spanish teacher for this whole year. I've been committed to PVUSD for over 26 years. I began my career as a paraprofessional when attending UC Santa Cruz. I fell in love with this community and never left, even though I live in Hollister. I worked for the migrant program as a teacher and then I transitioned into an Alianza teacher. I've taught fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I was their assistant principal, and now, like I said, a proud principal. I have been fully committed to the education of the children of Pajaro Valley. As a principal for the past four years, during and post-pandemic, I've worked as a principal, custodian, teacher, COVID testing coordinator, technology guru, homework packet maker, health clerk, stop it, gaggle, weekend, 24 hour, crisis respond, um, everything, substitute, and unpaid teacher, as mentioned before. I do that, that, that role, all those roles and many more. I do them because I'm committed to this community and to the students I love, and not to mention bilingual education. Two board meetings ago, a statement was made that I found, hmm, questionable, that a raise should be given to those people who work directly with students only. That is what I do. That is my job. I, I greet students every morning. I meet students every day. I'm teaching eighth grade students every day. That is what I do. I serve students. Tonight, make the right decision. Thank you. Good evening, President Home, Dr. Rodriguez, and trustees. My name is Wendy Baltasar Molina. I'm a PVUSD alumni, and I have been with the district for 15 years. I'm the mother of two future PVUSD students that are two and three years old, and I once again did not get to tuck them into bed tonight. I'm a classified member, a certificated member, and proud assistant principal of Alianza. My PVUSD teachers and family taught me I could do anything, so I have and I am. Some of my former teachers are here today, and some are now my colleagues, and I hope you're proud. The CV, Servir y abogar para estudiantes, familias y el personal de PVUSD y mi comunidad de Watsonville. PVSD president stated that money should go to those who directly work with students. That's all of us in PVUSD, including management. I have been teacher of record every year since becoming an administrator, worked as yard duty, office assistant, health clerk, and you've heard the list. It goes on and on and on. I made the decision to transition as a teacher to lead in my community. Your actions to table our raise and some comments on March 8th were divisive. Think about your intent versus your impact. Who are you trying to attract to lead PVUSD? What message did you send about PVUSD? What message did you send to me? 
We deserve a raise. Y también tal vez compensarnos por ser bilingües. Yeah. Gracias. Our next three speakers are Roshin Fahey, Mary Ann Hilton, and Greer Barnes. Good evening, PBSD stakeholders. My name is Roshin Fahey. I am academic coordinator of Rio Del Mar Elementary, and yes, this is my first year in administration, so I have assumed one of those positions where a very capable leader had decided to return to the classroom because it was more monetarily um, beneficial for her. And I taught previously for 15 years at Minty White Elementary, Mar Vista, Rio Del Mar, and I was the new teacher project mentor. And I do not have a planned speech tonight because I didn't even think I was going to be here, but upon reflecting, I thought that I had the moral imperative to speak as I spoke as a teacher in front of previous boards, Dr. Rodriguez, to ensure prep time for teachers when we K through three teachers had no time in the day to prepare lessons. I also hit the pavement to try to get a better wa wage for us teachers. And I think it is really important for me to speak for administrators as well, because we are really the same team. Our jobs are equally as complex. Uh, there are so many aspects to teaching and analyzing assessments and lesson planning, yet there are so many complex tasks in administration as well. And I have perhaps taken a pay cut and knowingly I still wanted to pursue it because it is a chance to grow. And that is what we tell our students we should do as humans, have a growth mindset, persevere, learn. I have so much more to learn and I am eager. I worry though that I have to pay $6,000 to clear my administrative credential that I was not as aware of. So please, please help us Thank and you. ensure that we have the 4.5% raise. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez, <clears throat> excuse me, members of the board and cabinet members. I'm losing my voice because we do bus duty. And so yelling at the students to get on the right bus has been, <laughs> has been difficult. Uh, traffic duty is one of my new favorites also. My name is Marianne Hilton, and I am a new administrator over at Pajaro Middle School. I work alongside Juan. And um, we, too, lost an administrator um, this uh, the year who went down uh, back to teaching. I shouldn't say down, went to teaching. Um, and he makes more this year than he did before. Um, I do not regret my, my choice of coming to this district. It has been wonderful. I have been welcomed with open arms. I have received a lot of support by my fellow administrators. It has been amazing. Um, I have 26 years of teaching experiences, experience 17 as a teacher, seven as an instructional coach. I've been a tech liaison, curriculum coordinator, and uh, an LEA assessment coordinator. I've done many things, and I bring that wealth of knowledge with me to this district, as many of my colleagues you've heard before have a lot of experience as well. Um, I, um, I, like I said, I did take a pay cut, but I do not regret my, my choice of coming here because of all of the support I received, because of my colleagues, because of the teachers, and really the families and my students I serve at Pajaro Middle School. It has been amazing. Um, working alongside Juan, he has put in countless hours there till nine, maybe even later, creating classrooms for our students to come back to, for our teachers to come back to, so that they didn't feel displaced. We are now at, uh, sharing a campus at Lake view and Elaine and Judy have been amazing as well on the teachers we have worked together the principals the teachers the custodians the cafeteria staff everyone in unity and really all of our positions are equally important so I really really I'm um, 
want to um, encourage you to rethink your choice because the administrators here do a lot of work. I have a laundry list also of, positions, of other things that we do that I'm not going to read because you've heard them Thank all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next three speakers are Leslie DeRose, Pam Shanks, and Joe Smith. Hi, good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, trustees, and cabinet. Uh, my name is Leslie DeRose. I'm a community member, mother of two graduates of PVOSD, um, have uh, a nephew at Aptos High School right now, and I served as a trustee for 12 years in Area 5. Um, I learned a lot uh, more than what I thought I know, but I did want to share some things with you. Um, over my 12 years as a trustee, the board was often asked the question, what do administrators do? Well, this is what I know. They keep the schools open. Look up California Ed Code and the U.S. Department of Education federal policies and ask yourself, who manages all that? Administrators do. Administrators spend countless hours on the bureaucracy that's required to keep the doors open. They ensure parent and student's rights are protected. They provide many opportunities for parent and student voices to be heard and integrated into local education plans. They ensure quick and factual information is provided to the community as we saw tonight. Administrators provide leadership and advancement opportunities for teachers and classified staff. Site administrators provide a safe place for our students to learn, play, and grow every day. Site administrators sometimes have their schools flooded, and they have to quickly figure out a way how to continue to provide an education. Site administrators sometimes have to open their schools to make room for students who were displaced because of floods. And as we learned this week in Nashville, site administrators sometimes run towards gunfire and lose their lives. Administrators take calls 24-7, and too often administrators are yelled at, they're told they're unworthy, and generally disparaged. But they keep going. PVUSD administration although much smaller since the 1718 school year, continually provides space for student achievement to grow. You've seen the results of investing yeah. in education. Please investigate in all educators. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm, board members, and Dr. Rodriguez. I am Pam Shanks. I'm the Director of Classified Personnel and have proudly worked in my position for 14, over 14 years. Prior to becoming the director, and some don't know this, I did work as a classified employee in this district and was mentored and guided by some amazing administrators who encouraged me to pursue moving into management. I am not alone in this career path. You've heard from many classified managers here tonight, and this isn't even all of them, who have had the same career path in working in this district as a classified employee. Um, again, with the exception of a few, the classified management um, have worked as classified employees and most of them in PVUSD. Why would we take on these roles? My motivation was to further challenge myself in my professional career, make a broader impact district-wide, and work with an administrative team to move this district forward. And yes, the higher income and being compensated fairly for the higher level work and responsibility of being in a leadership position. The management of this district is one of the hardest working group of professionals I have ever worked with. In addition to our regular daily work, when COVID became a part of our reality, we all stepped in, and Dan mentioned it and stole my stuff out of my, <laughs> that I was going to say, but we cleaned Chromebooks. We passed out Chromebooks and met our deadline and got them out to students. We helped our food and nutrition staff pass out meals to families. The HR administrative team worked on everything COVID vaccination related items for months not being able to even get to our own jobs or working doing our own jobs after hours. I won't go into the, my other laundry list of things because you've already heard what the many things that this district does, the administrators in this district do. But I do want to end with that the majority of our classified um, management were classified employees and not approving the pay increase says that our work does not matter and that our classified employees shouldn't look to management positions to advance their careers because they do not matter.
Good evening, uh, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. I'm Joseph Smith, and I'm Assistant Principal at Aptos High. I've been with the district for 27 years, first as a teacher and a basketball coach, and now as an administrator for, for seven years. And I, as a coach, I always think of a team aspect, and I look at um, my role on a team and what I can do to contribute. I'm also thankful for my team members. I'm very thankful to our district leaders for all the support they give us on site. We could not do our job without them. I'm grateful to our teachers and our classified staff. And I'm grateful to my fellow colleagues back here. It takes a team effort to do what we do every day. And I think we all deserve to have a raise. And I think um, we deserve our due because it's our time. And um, I, I, part of this job comes with sacrifice, and all of us are more than willing to sacrifice what we need to get the job done every day. And uh, that sacrifice comes from taking time away from our family, takes time away from doing other things that we like to do with, uh, in other aspects of our life. And, but I am grateful for the opportunity to serve, and I'm grateful for all the jobs that my colleagues do. So thank you. And our last three speakers are Michael Bellman, Jennifer Robinson, and Martha Vega. That's all right. Uh, good evening, President um, Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. Um, like a few others, I've had to rewrite my statement quite a few times. Um, you've heard about all the hard work that we do, um, so I don't know that I need to add my story um, into that. So I guess what I'd like to say is that um, though I'd rather be home with my girls, I'm glad that we're here tonight. Um, I'm glad that you're getting to see us and know us better. Um, I'm glad that you're getting to see what we do. I think this is a good opportunity. I've looked each of you, um, I've interacted with each of you outside of board meetings. Um, I believe you're listening. I believe that you understand that the great responsibility that we choose to wear is from passion and love. And I believe that you want to do right by our students, our families, and our staff. And I believe that you're hearing tonight that we're an integral part of that and we want you to know us and see us. And I look forward to the healing where we are. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, uh, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, board members and cabinet. First of all, thank you so much for being here and for serving on the board. Um, we really appreciate the time that you're here, that all that you do for our community. And to the new board members, thank you for listening and keeping an open mind. Um, my name is Jennifer Robinson, and I'm the coordinator for the Raising a Reader Book Bag program. Um, <laughs> This is a book bag program that serves children zero to five in our community. It started 17 years ago in Watsonville, has spread to the whole county and, and northern Monterey. Um, I, I work with um, over 200 preschools and family child care homes, and I have been doing this job for 17 years. Um, previously, I was a teacher for six years, um, I've taught reading in this district, and um, something I always noticed when I worked at Alianza is that there was a, a limited book supply for struggling readers, and I really wanted to do something to make a difference to provide book access to our community. And I found this, this position under Kathy, under Kathy Lathrop and now with Lisa Sandoval of where I can support 3,000 children a year when I was a teacher, I felt like I made an impact with 30 children, and now I feel like I can make a huge difference. Um, 
I have an assistant who helps me out. He's a preschool teacher, and this preschool teacher makes more money than I do as a coordinator. Um, I am the primary financial provider in my family, and I feel that all of us behind me, uh, as well as everyone, deserves a raise. Thank you. Uh, okay, so, all right. Martha's not here anymore. Okay. To thank you. I, for, first, I just wanted to say thank you to the 79 people who spoke tonight. Um, that's <laughs> I did. I know I have some questions, and I'm sure some of the other you know trustees have questions as well. Um, one question I had on slide five, you were talking about the, the benefits. And some of the uh, subsequent slides said, you know, just health benefits for high quality benefits. Is this benefit cost by unit, is that just health benefits on this slide or is that total compensation? No, the total compensation is noted on the other slide. This Thank you. is the 55 million is just for health benefits for all employees. When we discuss total compensation in addition to salary and health benefits, what does that include? So we were, what we're, you're seeing tonight is salary to salary, um, but one of the things that does happen is we wind up having, being able to allocate less money towards salary because of how much that we allocate towards benefits. So when we're talking about other benefits, you know, I would imagine that certain jobs have specific benefits that, are, that pertain to a given role, given the nature of some of the, the different jobs that we have in this district. But are those additional benefits, like beyond like health, comparable between our different bargaining units and administration? So in general, and you saw it with LAUSD, they just, um, they struck, they had a strike over it. Most school districts um, don't provide the health benefits specifically to their classified staff that we provide. So most school districts, what they do is they keep their employees un under the 7 point, the 3.75, and then they wind up not providing them health care benefits, which was exactly why the classified staff at LAUSD had a strike, um, not only because of the pay, but also because they were not receiving benefits. Versus us, um, we provide um, not only benefits, but full fam family benefits, which is, as you saw from the other slides, almost unheard of. And I've, I've, I've also had several people reach out, you know, expressing concern about, you know, uh, ad, lack of admin stability, creating more workload and, you know, turnover for, for them, for, especially for some of the teachers that wrote to me. And I know that's challenging to collect that kind of data because you have to be very careful about not conflating correlation with causation because there's a lot of different factors that can go into that but do we have any way of estimating fiscal impact of high admin turnover so well i would say a couple of things one it causes turnover of those that you see in this room because they wind up covering um, and so as you heard most district administrators have in one way or the other covered during the time when we had when we had absences so I'll give you an example of that so you'll see the at the vacancies that we had before and the dates of those vacancies so for example we're happy um, so for example you heard from the principal of Renaissance but he didn't actually come in until October and so because of that we wound up having um, di district administrators so I will forget names but I know that Claudia was there and Michael Berman was there and um, and um, and Terry um, Redfern were there to cover for that position so it causes not only stress on the school site and I think that's what I was speaking to is 
Have we done a fantastic job of making sure when we have these vacancies that we actually focus on the school sites and neglect the work that we that we have to do at the district office or at sometimes just do it at nighttime? Yes, we have. And so I don't I don't think that it's necessarily as much correlated to site, although anytime that you have challenging management whether either way um, then you have more turnover with teachers but I actually think it's produced more turnover in administration than it has actually turnover in teachers um, because of the fact that we when we say that we're all hands on deck I mean um, Dan's story made me laugh but um, made me smile but it is true so we put our we do not think of ourselves we think of our students when it comes to what needs to be done. So when COVID came, we did what had to be done so that we were na nationally recognized for the work that we did. And believe me, when everybody else was in shelter in place, all these people out here were not in shelter in place, including myself. <laughs> and when, and on that Tuesday, when everybody else, when we closed for the storms and everybody else was at home, District administration, every single person here was at their school site doing work, ensuring that we had Pajaro Middle, because we had promised our families Pajaro Middle would be at Lakeview on Wednesday. And so that's why they are there till 1.30 in the morning. So is, does, this cause, does this cause teachers to leave? Probably not. Does it cause them to leave? Maybe. But the reason why they do what we all ask them to do is because they know that I'm asking them to do it not for me, but for the students that we care about. And we will always put the students first. And sometimes that means that we press on people when they won't, don't want to be pressed on. And we pick up the slack when nobody else will pick up the slack. And I just, I had a comment that I wanted to make, and that's that, you know, when I stepped forward to be board president, one of the points I made was about treating people fairly, even when we don't always agree. And we're here tonight because even though I felt the proposed salary increase was the right thing to do, I also respected the request for additional information. What I also recognize is that what each of us may consider fair is highly subjective. And I remember in a conversation with another advocate about education underfunding, you know, they, they had said something along the lines of, it's, it's easy to support a tax you don't have to pay. And that has stayed with me. It can be very easy to slip into divisive and destabilizing ways of thinking, even with the best of intentions. And I get, I get the idea and the impulse behind wanting to hold back on administrative salaries. We are a culture that celebrates the underdog. And it is clear that our district personnel with lower salaries have immense challenges, particularly with costs of living. But as trustees, that's a tax we don't have to pay. It's easy to ask for that. What concerns me about taking what we think of as, as a Robin Hood approach and essentially deciding that, hey, maybe somebody over a certain you know, amount of salary shouldn't receive a raise, is that while it might score political points, it doesn't address the root cause of our chronic underfunding issues. And furthermore, having solid administrative support is key to the retention of our classified and certificated staff. I've worked under unique management situations. It's incredibly demoralizing not to have the support and be you know in a role where you're trying to figure everything out I am deeply concerned that if we don't offer a fair pay increase at all levels the unintended consequences will include erosion of available support to our already stressed teachers and classified workers I've spoken at previous meetings about the ethical principles of beneficence and non malfeasance doing good versus doing harm and I believe that any potential good out of continuing to deny our administrative staff a fair raise is vastly outweighed by the harm it could do to the district overall. 
And I hope that when we bring this item back at our next regular board meeting, I hope I'll have the full support of the board when we next vote on this. Is there anybody else who has a question or comment? Nobody? Yeah, of course. Trustee DeSerpa? Well, I just uh, wanted to um, say that Morielle, I think, has a comment that she would like to make. So I wanted to make sure her voice was heard. Is that okay? Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, first of all, I can't believe I just sat through 79 public speakers. <laughs> Um, but I don't regret it at all because you guys are the heart of our community, I mean, our schools. And I just wanted to say that this really is like a full circle moment for me because I was just, this summer I was across the room at, um, for the Summer in the City program and I was an intern at the PVUSD and so I spent my four weeks pretty much just getting to know a lot of people at the district and it was so nice seeing so many familiar faces and also I still have the notepad of all my notes because each time we had like a speaker and the directors, you guys, you know, um, management, classified, everyone, we had them speak to us and kind of explain what their job was and I just remember being so like in tune with everything and I felt that writing these notes right now except I just was so heartbroken because I was hearing everything that you guys do, but it was because you're advocating for trying to pretty much justify your worth, and that's just an injustice. And I'm really sorry that we're here for that purpose today, but I'm also really inspired by everyone who cares so much for students. And I just wanted to say on behalf of all of us, thank you. And we see you and we hear you. <laughs> and it, it's really, um, it's something, you know, being pretty much, I think, the only student here. And I say that I feel like in every, like, important meeting. But in our everyday lives at our schools, we see you. And please know that... Um, we love you just as much as you love you, what you do for us and what you contribute to our lives. So thank you again. <laughs> Trustee De Serpa, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I was going to stay silent because I've worked personally with a lot of you in this room when I was employed with the district in Sergio and Salo's role and Hurley's role when I was in the maintenance department. And I did the work as well as you guys did or, or the, you know, the guys in the maintenance department were doing or are doing and worked with a lot of you at your sites. I remember one instance we had Alianza had a broken main. It was two weeks before school started. Um, myself and some of the maintenance crew were out there on a Saturday, you know, vacuuming classrooms out, extracting water, getting, you know, everything dry. Um, we had to troubleshoot how to run a, a water line. Uh, old cast iron pipes that rotted out and broke. And, uh, you know, we... We uh, improvised, we adapted, and we made it work. Um, so those are the kinds of things, you know, that happen behind the scenes that a lot of people don't see, you know, to make, to make school happen. And uh, for me personally, that's one of my prouder achievements working here in the district because, you know, I was free to think innovatively to make something work. And, and, it, and uh, it happened. We made it work. Um, 
you know, like President Holmes said regarding, uh, you know, all levels deserving their, their means, you know, I, I agree with that. You know, I, everybody deserves their means across the board. We're, everybody, at everybody at every level is struggling. I see it in my job. We're having a hard time recruiting right now for certain positions as well, and it's everywhere. And it's, it's all the economics in this area. I mean, if you've been here for a long time and you've established yourself and you bought a home even 10 years ago, you know, you're, you're doing okay. But currently it's a little difficult just because of the market, the way things are. And, um, and if you're in that position, you know, you're blessed. And if you're not, you know, I, I wish you all the luck and, and uh, everything to, to achieve that. Um, well, that being said, along with uh, my absence in the last couple of meetings, I've had some very extren extenuating c circumstances uh, which caused me to have to make alternate plans the last couple of meetings. And uh, after hearing what happened at the last meeting or last couple of meetings, I'm, you know, I'm glad, glad I wasn't there for that. Um, but, uh, you know, moving forward, you know, I, I, I heard all your stories and, you know, and you, know, you guys are doing some great work, great job. So I really appreciate that. And, uh, and with that, that'll, you know, put a thought in my head. All right. So thank you. And have a good evening. Trustee Dodge, Jr. Good evening, everybody. I'm glad to see everybody here this evening. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, I've always support, you know, su supported to want to increase administrative pay. The only issue and concern that I had was trying to tie cabinet pay, you know. And so I know how important you guys are to this, to Watsonville, to the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. And, uh, I, you know, I've had some good conversations even before these meetings. You know, I, I know a, a principal, you know, he told me, Dodge. You know, we need to support our, our principals and our assistant principals because without them, it, it, it does destabilize our, our schools, our middle schools. And um, that's the one thing that I still remember. And, you know, I'm a wildcat, you know, just like my grandparents before me. Um, and I want to continue to support, the, you know, you know, you know, the, the assistant principal we have, um, you know, Miss Molina Baltasar Molina, you know, Ralphie at Watsonville High, Gregorio, uh, you know, well, uh, they have different last names, Blanca and Hall. Like, we need to to continue to to grow these homegrown this, this homegrown talent. You know, Luis Mendina, who's been here a long time, you know, who's mentored a lot of people. You know, Alcantar, who's doing things at Paro to keep it up and running. And so I, I've always, you know, supported, you know, this pay for you guys. You know, it was just one, one little hang up, but, you know, I plan to support you guys, you know, your pay raise. You know, I'm glad to see classified workers, you know, with their contract signed in PVFT. And, you know, let's just keep pushing forward. And I'm, I'm listening to the conversations with people, you know, who walk up to me who were upset the first time. You know, people told me who, you know, they, they cried. And uh, so I'm listening. You know, and I just wanted to say that. So thank you, everybody. Just, just real quick, since we, we have been talking about, like, cabinet as being separate somehow than administration, can you clarify that there was a comment about the cabinet salary increase being 11 percent? Can you? Sure. So um, each, each week we have meetings with PBFT and CSCA, so in the future I just encourage you to reach out and ask these type of questions so that then there is accurate information. So it is a 4.5 because on May 11th we did an increase to Lisa's position and to Casey's position because we withdrew an assistant superintendent. So on May 11th, 2022, they were put in alignment with Allison's position. So when there's the conversation, the misinformation about the higher raise, uh, making the assumption or the accusation 
that we are cheaters and that we are cheating people, it all could have been cleared up if there actually would have been the question ahead of time. Because what I would have said was, look at what was provided in the backup documentation, which was in March 11, 2022, those two positions were provided in the increase because their duties increased because we got rid of, of an entire assistant superintendent. And then if you look at the others, there is no change, such as mine. So it's just the 4.5%. Um, and that is the challenge that we have is divisiveness and misinformation is specifically done to split us and to hinder this district. <laughs> Trustee Stahl, you had something? Thank you everybody for coming tonight. This has been a, an important evening. Um, I'm happy we had this. I know some of you wish we would have just put it done, done it March 8th, but I really, as a newer board member, appreciate this conversation. I know that, and I've been talking to principals and teachers, I know your job has gotten really difficult. And the staffing shortage affects the entire school site. We don't have enough teachers and the principals are doing more work. We don't have enough classified staff. We don't have enough nurses and the classified. And it's, it's become a perfect storm with the cost of living in this county. And I, I, I believe this board is on a path to recognize that our salaries up, up and down the scale need to be competitive, recognizing that it's more expensive to live in Watsonville than Salinas, where they pay more. And so that just does not work. There's competitive wages, and at the bottom of the scale, there's sufficient wages. I mean, we still have classified people making $40,000 a year. How do they make it? And so. I want to thank our board president and my colleagues for, for having this discussion and, I, and for you for being here. This is very important. Thank you for everything you do for our kids. I know how hard you work. I'm at our school sites and I do after school. Thank you so much. I'm impressed. I'm honored. We want you to stay here. We want our teachers to stay here. We want our classified staff to stay here. It's never been harder than ever before. Somebody make, made a point about the funding and, and just the realities of the cost of living being near Silicon Valley. Clearly, the good old days are over on that. And so thank you for, for being here. We're going to figure this out. I've always said I support a raise for administration. Um, it is good to have a conversation. People sometimes criticize the teacher scale. Well, it's 10% across the board. If you're a young teacher, you're making 52000 A veteran teacher is obviously making some more than some of our assistant principals. Well, let's just take a 4.5% raise. Some of you are making 80000 Some of you are making 120000 you make it 120,000, that would be a $5,400 raise. If you're making 80,000, you're only going to get a $3,600 raise. Maybe we can make that a little more fair. Um, so thank you for being here. This is important. We're going to figure this out. We're going to do it. I've never had any doubt that this board is going to do it. And uh, I look forward to continuing the conversation. Trustee Flores, and just being mindful that um, this special se study session ends at 1030, so just Okay, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for being here, and I am glad that we were able to have this time to um, learn more about you know our salaries and to learn more of, about you guys, about what you do and how you um, are able to be there for our children. And I'm just thankful for every single one of you here and just hearing you. We I've only sat on a handful of meetings so far, and I've only really heard from teachers. And so I love to see um, all of you here advocating for yourselves, and we will make sure to um, ensure that we have one of the best districts that we can. And, you know, hopefully we're able to do that very soon. Go ahead. I, President Holmes giving me that look. Yes, I got it, time, I'm the timekeeper. Um, so, and I'm pretty much, pretty much a lot of what my colleagues have said, I'm, I'm just gonna echo and so I'm just gonna say, to that, I echo what a lot of you have said here. I want to um, respectfully thank President Holm for um, agreeing to bring this meeting, special meeting forward. I do agree as well that it was an important meeting to have. Um, it, it was an important conversation to have, and we ha can only have these conversations in public with the public. So I'm appreciative of everyone who's came tonight and gave their time. Um, this was my one week of vacation. I gave up my week of vacation with my family to be here tonight. So um, 
you know, and I get that a lot of our administrators, you know, I, I, I was a class of, similar to Trustee Soto, I was a classified school employee for this very district. I come from a long lineage of classified employees um, who've worked directly hand in hand with our management. I also know from working in higher ed um, and my role and working with my administration on subcommittee work that I do that I don't get paid additional pay to do, but I show up and I do it, right? And I know that level of work that comes from our admin. So, and again, I agree with the echoing of many comments that have been made about we really have to look at our wages for our entire, all of our employees at this district. And so that's why I think this meeting was a good meeting to have and a good conversation and I look forward to continuing the conversation. And I, again, I too, I am confident that we as a board will get this figured out for all of our employees. Thank you. Did you have anything you wanted to say? I'll, yeah, I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, you all said it for me, actually. I didn't realize I was gonna cry so much tonight, actually. Um, so thank you for, thank you to everybody here who sort of bared their soul to this board. My head was spinning in circles uh, after the, or during the board meeting of March 8th. It was very, I was very, very upset because I knew this would destabilize our district by postponing this very important vote. I have always been in support of increases where we could afford it for CSEA, for PVFT, and for, um, for our managers, administrators, directors, principals, cabinet, and our superintendent. It's the right thing to do. These people that are sitting in front of you uh, on our cabinet have advanced degrees and increased unbelievable responsibilities, and they deserve a raise too. They should not be separated. You couldn't see them, but I can see their faces, and they were crying right along with all of us, hearing the stories. I know how hard you work. When I look out here, I see friends. I see people I've known. I've been on the board now. This is my 13th year. People ask me, why do you still want to keep doing it? It's, <laughs> it's really painful sometimes, right? We all have um, a very sacred duty to do the best for kids in the Pajaro Valley. That's why we do it, right? And uh, with your help, we'll continue to do that. We have raised the bar under the leadership of Dr. Rodriguez. We have raised the bar and increased opportunity for children. And I, I really, I don't know if you, you could hear me clearly, we've raised opportunity for children in the Pajaro Valley. It is so important. We couldn't have done it without Dr. Rodriguez's leadership and her cabinet and all of you out here, all of our teachers and our classified, we all make a big difference. So that's about it for my comments and I support you all and hopefully our board, met, our, our board of trustees will support you too, thank you. I think we got everybody. Okay. So our next meeting is immediately after the close of this one. <laughs> so it's about the Pajaro Middle School resolution, so please don't go anywhere. Um, our next, we, our next re well, we have a, a student recognition on April 19th, and April 26th is our next regular uh, board meeting. But So I'm going to adjourn this meeting at... 1026 and then we'll open the next one give people a moment to step out
All right. Okay. All right. So we're still okay. So moving on to our special board meeting uh, for the Pajaro Middle School resolution for emergency contract services. We've already done our our pledge of allegiance and all of that. So. Um, We'll move on to item 2.1, our approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve? We have a motion from Trustee Flores and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Okay. So um, our action item is item 3.1, resolution 22-2350, emergency waiver. And the report will be presented by uh, Rich Ayano, our director of purchasing. I don't think you're present. Oh. Is everybody okay? Okay. Um, this evening, I'm here to present the uh, resolution 22-2350, um, emergency work and delegation of authority to take immediate actions uh, to get to work on the rehabilitation of Pajaro Middle School's campus. Um, we're bringing this forward so that our team can continue the work we're doing to um, assess and. Um, get to work as quickly as possible to start that process. So um, bear with me for a moment. I'm going to read some of the whereases that are, I think, the, the very critical things that are going to um, help with your vote on this item tonight. So uh, whereas Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency for the state of California due to severe winter storms related to a series of atmospheric river systems in his order entitled Proclamation of a State of Emergency, signed January, January 4th, 2023, whereas the breach of the Pajaro River levee on March 11th, 2023, caused widespread flooding in the Pajaro area, including pa the Pajaro Middle School campus, whereas the rainfall and flooding caused known damage to the 10 building structures that are Pajaro Middle School facilities, including the library and rendering the facilities inoperable, whereas the district intends immediately to engage in emergency repair to the Pajaro Middle School campus, which is necessary to permit the continuance of existing school operations and to avoid danger to life and property, including entering into a contract with ServPro and its available vendors for such repair. And whereas under cer such circumstances, public contract code sections 22035, 22050 permit such emergency situations to be remedied by entering into a contract or contracts which would otherwise require compliance with public bidding processes. The board's approval, if we go down to number four in the next section, this is um, what you are allowing uh, Dr. Rodriguez or her designee to, to perform. Uh, we would have the authorization and be directed to take any and all lawful measures to ensure the timely completion of the project and negotiate and enter into contracts pursuant to the authority of this resolution. Um, our PVUSD emergency response team has been working with the California Department of Education um, to guide us through this process. We're working with, through our insurance. We're, we're working with every resource that we have to make sure that we can um, get in as quickly as possible and begin the repairs. Um, our team has stayed for this portion, for this meeting, for this board meeting, uh, to answer any questions that the board may have. We respectfully request your approval uh, of this resolution. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. Any discussion from the board? I, I know I was, you know, I was out at the site um, a week ago, and then I went back today, and thank you to Sergio and Hurley for just showing me. Just, look, it, I went, was, and a couple other trustees were out there last week. Just the difference in how things are progressing in just in less than a week is it's like oh not fantastic <laughs> so we need to move on this that's there is some urgency um just visually i could see it's like it's, it's yeah see the serpa um having viewed the school and seeing the damage the mud 
the warped floors, the mold starting to grow even a week ago. Um, and now with the weather heating up, we really need to get this done immediately. So if anybody, I don't know, there's probably other questions here, but I'd like to move to approve this resolution. I'd like to second that. Any other comments, Trustee Dodge Jr.? Yeah, just, I'd just like to say thank you, uh, uh, Lindo and the team. <laughs> you know, we, we were there, you know, Trustee Holm and uh, Trustee De Serpent. Thank you, uh, Tony Thurm, for coming out. I mean, yeah, it was, you know, when I was there, there was still standing water, and the, the water had a color swirling in it. You know, obviously, I want to support this too, but I just wanted to say thank you guys. You know, I know, like you said, you know, you, you know, you kind of lost your home, but you still showed up to work. And I just wanted to say thank you, man. We appreciate it. So thank you. Trustee Soto? Yeah, I just want to reiterate uh, Trustee Dodge's comments, you know, and everybody's effort to clean up. Um, I mean, I was personally impacted by the storms as well. Um, cause I, I live over in that area and, uh, something very unprecedented, unprecedented that occurred, you know, it just, I've never seen it in my whole life living here. I mean, the last I remember was the 95 floods and, um, but even then that wasn't quite what this was I, in my opinion I mean, and, and the devastation and the displacement and the people suffering, you know, being out of their house, I'm, I'm, I made a, a donation to the fairgrounds and saw, you know, the conditions over there, and I really feel for all those families, you know, living in an open bay, no privacy. Um, yeah, it's just sad, very, very sad. Um, and thank you, Dr. Rodriguez, for um, getting the site for accommodations for all the agencies that are there right now. I, I, I hadn't personally driven through Pajaro, and it wasn't by choice. It's just I, I haven't had the chance to. I've been at work as well, um, but um, you know, and, and, there, it, and in my area where I live, you know, I I have a lot of piles of garbage and stuff. People that are just throwing stuff out. I mean, I'm up on a hill. I was affected by trees down. I was stuck on my hill for two days, which is why I wasn't able to come to the last board meeting. Two days uh, of unaccessible roads because of trees down and three days for them to restore power um, and it, it's just it's crazy and Sergio you know you're in Hurley and you guys thank you for um, you know, all your efforts you know I know where you I know where you live and um, I know you got hit by that too so you know thanks for being uh, you know your diligence despite your situation um, and Rich, just one quick question. So this, this is going to be the abatement portion for the site. And then once we get into the construction phase, will that be a separate or will this fall under this umbrella with this resolution on the, on the construction portion? So, f so this is, um, we're asking for this authority to enter into phase one, which is the drying and cleaning phase. Um, there will portion. be some abatement services that are provided. It also includes um, assessment of all the contents of all of these rooms. Things that are still viable will be packed out, stored, and then packed back in once construction starts. But that that's part of phase two. Uh, phase two services would be the construction services. The, this is just to get everything cleaned up and, and prepped and for the construction services. Uh, the construction services piece would come back as a, as a different item for the board. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I just do have one quick comment, to, um, sort of piggyback on what uh, Trustee Soto was saying and wanted to just reiterate um, to Dr. Rodriguez about the conversation we had in intergovernmental committee about getting our elected representative on that side on Monterey County um, invited and on that committee. I mean, this just shows us really more evidence of the importance of that. And, you know, again, you know, for those of us in Trustee Soto, right, this isn't the first time, it's not the second time this has happened in Pajaro, so it's really um, important. And we also talked about just other natural disasters we're prone to in California, earthquakes. It could be anything at any time. So I, I know, I know you, I trust you'll get in touch with the city manager on that. <laughs> Thank you.
And I just wanted to um, just also state, I meant to say this earlier, but you know, that I appreciate like today, you know, we had a state assembly member at us, you know, come out to see the sites, to see, you know, what help Sacramento could offer and also representatives from Senator John Laird's office. And I know a lot of our other local representatives have been involved and so we are, they're, they're paying attention. And I just appreciate everybody who made those visits possible. I know that's taken some time and it, it helps them help us, which is all to the good. Um, so we have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Oh, I do have to adjourn. <laughs> no, no, we get to stay here forever. Um, so with that, I've already announced uh, future meetings, so um, we will adjourn at 1038. Thank you, everyone.